made. Right, so, um, a lot of you will know who I am, Rachel Pierce, Ag Wires for 35 years, Vice Chair of the Wire Association, um, Dave's on committee as well. Um, we decided we'd put this basic introduction to White Fox Terrier coat care together because at the White Fox Terrier Association we've been inundated with pet owners contacting us what am I doing, what can I do with my wire fox terrier and its coat because I can't get to the groomers because of the coronavirus. Um, so it is almost a bit of a welfare. So that's why we're doing this today. This is not a breed seminar. This is not show preparation. This is not high level show trimming. You are, if you have an interest in those areas, that's fine. You're welcome to stay and ask questions and be part of this demo. But this is really bare, back to basics. How do I look after my wire fox terrier's coat? Um, from a pet owner's point of view, as much as anything else. So, we've got a variety of things to go through. Um, one of them is... Oh, people saying they can't hear. Basic equipment. It should be up to here because it's coming through on my phone. Okay, so one is basic equipment, um, how to handle your dog while you're trying to groom and check them. Um, and we've got different ages of dogs and different coats for you to see. We're aware some pet owners will have bought puppies and have youngsters that were in due for puppy trims as well as people who've got clipped off veterans or clipped off pets that are adults. Um, we are focusing today on wire hand strip coats, but I am just gonna touch on clip coats and maintenance as a side. At the end of all this, this will be able to be played back again um, and we will link it to the Wire Association website. Um, if people want to ask questions through, they can. Um, I've, we've got a bit of support with Annie and Dave on technical side, although it's been very interesting so far. And uh, our other committee member, Linda, is at home helping answer questions as you're asking, uh, because I obviously haven't got a view of what you're asking online. Um, the very end of all this as well, we're probably going to ask if there's other things people would want to do about wire fox terriers or possibly uh, Welsh terriers or anything like that. Um, we're going to do a survey from the Wire Fox Terrier Association. If there's any or any more demonstrations or things you'd like to know about the breed or trimming, the Wire Fox Terrier Association does have grooming seminars, which is aimed at a bit more in-depth coat management and trimming. And there's a lot of one-to-one -one support at those things um, from a lot of experienced, skilled people. And that is very much aimed, yes, at pet owners, but also people who are like novice exhibitors and want more support. We've had to cancel the one that we had in March, which is another reason why we thought we'd do this today. Um, we are holding one in September, hopefully, um, and the details will be on the website. But regarding wire fox terriers and breed, if there's anything in the future you think you'd like us to do, um, we're going to do a bit of a survey or set a bit of a survey up through Facebook and the website for people to access. So you can let us know your ideas. We're not technologically experienced people. Um, I'm a nurse part time as well as a groomer. Uh, Dave's a vet as well as a groomer, um, we're both very experienced breed people, um, but technology is not our forte. So if this goes a bit pear-shaped along the way, please just bear with us, we're doing the best we can. Um, so Just before we start on grooming, do you just want to let the members know what situations oh, we use? Oh yeah, what? I can do that. <laughs> I don't know if anybody can say this. We have had the Wire Fox Terrier Association yearbooks printed. They were available at Crofts as usual. We only ever have a limited supply available at Crofts because obviously hauling in the books is quite a heavy load. So we did have quite a number picked up as usual at Crofts. 
The reminder that it's outstanding to be printed um, is always done after Crufts and then sent out to the reminding members. But unfortunately, because of coronavirus, the printers are closed because it's a non-essential service. So those of you that are members and haven't had your White Fox Terrier Association yearbooks yet, don't panic. You will be getting them. But obviously, due to the current situation, everything's a bit delayed. The website is being maintained and up to date though, so if there's anything you want and you want to chat to any of us on the committee about welfare, health, um, judging, various things, go on there, the links are all there, puppy coordinating, it's all on there um, and uh, we'll give you all the help we can. We know it's difficult times. Right. Should we start now with a couple of dogs as an example of a... Yes. Uh, um, uh, hand trimmed and a clip dog so if you pop Tina on one table yeah. and I'll go and grab Betty. You grab Betty. I don't know if we'll get them on the two oh. table but we'll have them. Right. Come on Betty. Say hello to Tina. Come on Betty. Right, Tina is um, in, maintained in the show trim. Um, she's had her coat completely topped off because of coronavirus and obviously nothing is happening at the moment. Um, but I just want to start with showing the differences between a wire coat and a clipped off coat. Lots of pet owners out there will have a wire fox terrier that's clipped off. And there's nothing wrong with that. Um, there's a number of reasons why that might be done. Convenience, cost. But the natural foundation of a fox terrier, the wire fox terrier, is to have a wire coat. And we will always support that um, wire coats are the way to be maintained really for skin integrity, for health of the skin and coat follicles. Because it is naturally what they should be. So, here we have Betty has decided to come and be a model for us as well. So, another thing to say is None of the dogs have been pre-prepped for today. So nobody's been had their coats timed specifically for today. Nobody's been bathed and conditioned and glorified for today. They've just been dogs that have been running around for the last six weeks, really doing what they want to do um, and just being dogs, apart from general dunking the bath every couple of weeks when they've been rolling in certain things. Mm. <laughs> So, um, what, what's the difference between a clip coat and a wire coat? Okay. Wow. Well, a hand strip coat. Mm. Um, you will lose colour and texture. And I know a lot of you out there already know that, but a lot of pet owners won't know that. Or they won't have understood that when they went to the local groomer and they went, oh yes, I can trim that wire fox terry for you, I can do that. And they've gone Vzz! with the clippers and the wire coat's gone. Now, one of the things with that in the current times is, some people might be doing that during this coronavirus outbreak because they can't get to their groomers. If your dog's been clipped off once, it doesn't mean it can never be hand stripped again. But what it will mean is you need to let it grow out like a big hairy teddy bear before it ever gets pulled back again. And if you have got an experienced groomer, they will be able to get that coat back for you. So do not panic. Just to make that point, Tina, who's currently stood just behind Rachel, so you can't see her. <laughs> Tina was previously clipped. So this is a bitch that had been clipped. We let her coat grow out and then we hand trimmed her again. So she's now a hand trimmed wire. So just prove the point, you can get the coat back. But you, you know, Betty here, even though um, she, she's been clipped and she's got a really good coat, so I wouldn't pull this because it would be unfair and it would be uncomfortable for her to pull this. But if she was left another three or four months, in three or four months, you could hand trim this again and it wouldn't be any different really to trim in a blown hand trimmed coat that had been left to grow out for about six months. Um, it'd be a little bit more difficult to get out, but it, it shouldn't be painful for the dogs. Um, and one of the other sort of myths that we have with hand trimming dogs is that it's cruel to pull out coats. And I know Rachel will go through technique of hand trimming. And if you trim with a good technique, it should not be cruel and it should not be painful for the dog. 
I think the other thing is people need to understand a wire coat. Um, uh, I was told this many, many years ago, and a really, really simple analogy is that a wire coat is a bit like a leaf on a tree. And I know some of our friends overseas will have heard this analogy as well because they probably had the same mentors as I did through the years. Um, that a leaf will bud, bloom, live for a period of time, die, drop off, the next leaf comes through. And a wire coat is pretty much like that. Unless you take the dead wood out, the, the dead leaves, the dead coat, you're not going to get a new generation of coat. So when you clip a coat, you're basically cutting a coat. And when you cut the coat, you're cutting dead coat. So that's why the texture goes and that's why the colour goes. So this bitch used to have a beautiful ginger nut tan head. Um, very much like uh, Tina does here. Do you want to just step to the side a bit, Tina, right. so people can't see it? So she used to have a beautiful tan ginger head, just like this girl did here. And her patch on her side that used to be proper jet black um, and of course now it's not so tans go beige blacks go charcoal or grey their coats end up a little bit like cotton candy they mat easier um, so and really if you've got something that's been clipped time and time again i wouldn't recommend hand trimming it anymore but if it's been done once Yes, you can get away with bringing that back. It just needs to grow out, like Dave said. Uh, just sort of on that same theme, one other question we get asked quite a lot is, can spade neutered wire coats oh, be trimmed? Okay. So just want to give some yes. thoughts on that. Yes, <laughs> is the answer. It's an easy cop out for people to say um, that um, uh, a spade or neutered animal cannot be hand stripped. It's a lot of baloney. Um, if dogs have got good coats and they've been hand stripped and they've been well maintained, there's no reason from a pet owner's point of view or anybody else that they can't still be trimmed and maintained. Coats can mm. lose a little bit of integrity, they might soften slightly, you might get a bit more undercoat. Um, and Agnetta's asked if you can just stand behind the dog, which is probably yes. a good point, but you know, when we get to actually trimming, we'll yeah. do well more. And age. Age can also have a slight bearing as well, because obviously from an age point of view, the older they get, they also they might just soften slightly or thicken. Um, and the opposite can be true, they can actually thin out a little bit, especially when they start getting changes in hormones. So um, there's various, that's just various things to um, just contemplate really with them. So, Do you just want to touch on whether or not boards and cans and things have coats oh, are saying as yeah, well, yeah, and I'll yeah, 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 put yeah. Betty somewhere safe. Yep. <laughs> um, he's took my train of thought away. There we go. Hey, um, what else was I going to say? Yes, <laughs> uh, Dave was just saying that about people think if we trim a board to terrier or we trim a can, that, that people can trim a wire fox terrier. They're completely different coats in the density, um, really. Um, a, a wire fox terrier wire coat should be really thick. It should be like coconut matting, the traditional description, that if you part the coat, you can't see the skin underneath. On a short point of view, we take a lot of undercoat out and we make it look shorter, we make it look shiny, it sits much closer to the body, it gives us a lovely outline when we look across the ring. But wire cuts are much thicker, have much more layers and much more depth to them. Um, from an age point of view, uh, that was what I was going to say about clipping. Apart from some people that get it done for convenience uh, uh, and that's what their groom is good at doing, that's fine. But also, um, I've lost my thought again, I need shooting. Huh? Um, what was I going to say about clipping? I keep, I've said it to you this morning. I'm not sure. Not sure where you were going with that one, sorry. Yes, age, that's it. Uh, a lot of people think you've got to start clipping dogs once they get to a veteran age. You haven't got to. You can keep hand stripping them. The reason I would start clipping an older dog is not because of their age and their coat, but the length of time they have to stand on a table for that process to happen. 
Um, and obviously the older dogs get, once they get to 10, 11, 12, they might be getting a bit of rheumatics, they might be getting a bit of arthritis, they might be a bit sore in the mornings when they wake up, like the rest of us. So, you know, I won't want to be sitting in a hairdresser's chair for three hours, not that I ever do anyway, but I wouldn't want that in old age. Your dogs don't want it. It's, a, it's not supposed to be a, a, a difficult experience for them. And for the oldies, we wanted them to be as comfortable as possible. So clipping them, it's a quicker process, it's easier on them. So yes. Right, another... Uh, coconut mat in and I'll grab Sky. Leave you with the... But can I come back to that yeah. in a minute? Because I'm going to just do sort these pups and then these can go out the way. Right, the reason I've got pups lurking around under my feet is because I'm aware before coronavirus some people will have picked up puppies and they'll have come to new homes because I've had a couple of calls from people. And the trouble is... Pups are now probably due their first trims mm -hmm. um, and um, need things doing with them. So I've got a little brother and sister here who have not been brushed out and haven't had anything done. But I just want to talk for the owners that have got young puppies and, and they're wondering what the hell am I going to do. Right, this girl, these guys are, oh, I don't know, you're about nearly five months old now, aren't you? Yes, yes. Um, they haven't had a lot of time on the table, so um, they might be a bit wriggly worms. She has actually got, this or is going to have, a really good... Which way are you going? I'm just trying to work it out, but it's so delayed on the camera every time I move up, I'm moving <laughs> the wrong way. I can just move up the table. Right. Leave it to me. Yeah. There. That's it. Hopefully we're a bit more centred then. So, um, she's actually going to end up with a really, really nice, um, old-fashioned, thick white coat. She's got plenty of tan on her ears. She has got plenty of white coming through. But she's had no puppy coat pulled off her. Um, as a breeder uh, and um, an exhibitor of the breed, I would have normally pulled all this off her by now, pulled all her puppy coat out. And she would have had a lovely, nice wire coat coming through which she hasn't she's got all her puppy coat yes mm -hmm. yeah because mommy's not been doing a job so we've got all this puppy fluff we've got little matties down her legs because she's been out playing up the fields so basically from a pet owner's point of view i'll she go through the combs in a bit but what would she do i know i'd get a comb and just thoroughly comb her through um, and that's really all I'd be doing with her right now until you can get to a groomer thoroughly just uh, combing her through and if she's got what are you doing and if she's got long bits sticking out on her legs when you've combed her through you can almost see on her she's almost got two different layers here she's sort of got a line there I would just put these is all dead coat it's all just old puppy fluff and it literally just needs to come out and it is a process that takes a little time and patience and I'll talk about education and handling dogs on the table in a bit but this and I will just take it a bit at a time hi darling yes I think it's really important at this stage as well not to go too mad with trimming no. but just to make sure that being on the table is a nice experience it's it not is. at all to change she's much. hardly been on the table at all but you just need to start, after you've thoroughly combed out, taking the little pieces off, just pulling any little mats off that they've got and just keeping them clean and tidy um, and, and just tipping their nails. And I'm going to show you her brother as a comparison because he did have all his puppy coat off. Come here, mister. Roger. Good boy. Good boy. Oh, <laughs> come here, mister man. <laughs> Hi. Hello, monkey. So this is her brother. Hello, it's a good point. And neither of these have had a lot of table time, so I'm, I'm the worst mummy in the world at the moment because I went back to part-time nursing recently due to certain things. So he has had all his puppy coat out. So it's quite clear here, his coat's much more advanced from a wire point of view, his colours are much stronger, 
Um, it's much shorter, it's much tighter. I'll just try and bring the phone a bit closer to see that because it's not that clear across the room. He hasn't got Hopefully all the long pups sticking out of his legs. He just... So he hasn't got all the long puppy fluffs. Oh, hello, <laughs> mister. <laughs> he hasn't got all the long puppy fluffs sticking out of his legs. So he's got far more colour to him, far more definition. So... Um, and get the whole dog in there we go <laughs> what are you doing little man so yeah so at this age it's all about having a bit of fun on the table that it's a nice experience and just getting them brushed out but that's why puppy coats can look very different at this age because it depends on if the breed has pulled it all out before you've had it and how much it's grown since you've had it um so i just wanted to show you the two of them because they're both very different stages of their coat care what are you doing go on you go down uh, now i've got it closer do you want to just pop out on the table again for another two <laughs> seconds so people can get a better appreciation it's it was a bit that. far away to it's see right so as you can see fluff ball <laughs> that's much better it's much clearer there we go so she's much more of a fluff ball. She's still got all of her puppy fluff. Okay. And a lot of pet owners, this is what stage your puppies will be at if the breeders didn't pull it out before you had it. So good thorough combing, tipping nails, which I'll go through, and any long straggly bits after you've combed out, pulling them out. But we'll go through that in a bit. But I just wanted to show the different coats puppies could be at if you've just had them. Right, Mrs. There you go. Right, do you want to grab um, Sky and I'll see if I get this phone set up on this tape. Where is Sky? Where is Sky? <laughs> She's just in through that door. See if we can get because it'll be steadier than me trying to hold it. And everybody's now going, oh my god, look mm. at the length of that coat. And Let's oh try and get it really close god. so we can really see. Right, this, this is how a wire coat should go. And I haven't got a fox terrier in this mm. length of coat to show you, but this is literally how a wire coat should go. How you'd expect it to go when it's grown and grown and grown and blown. So, those of you that have got wire fox terriers. Um, that we're due to go to the groomers and it's been 10 or 12 weeks and we're now getting on to 16 weeks and time's going on your coat should be going like this if you've got a hand stripped dog so literally people go are ringing up and going oh my dog's coat's matting and oh, i don't know what to do this is probably the easiest coat to manage out of everything at the moment when it's this length um, you will have people say to you as well that you can't clip a coat when it starts to mat. Yeah. And like Rachel said, as a as a groomer, when we have Welsh and wires come in, this is a, <laughs> this is a dream of a coat yeah. to trim. <laughs> really, it's fine if it starts to mat when it's like this. This coat is completely dead. It is well past its sell by date. Okay, so even on the top of her head. Where it's starting to mat, we can see we've even got a bit of a party going Hello, Sky. <laughs> okay, this will come straight out because it's gone. And naturally, this is what the coats were meant to do when these were working dogs, so that when they were working the fields, that when they brushed up against hedgerows and fields and uh, thorns. That they would lose their coat on those because it would be pulled out. Even a big mat, the way that's starting to mat there. Oh, let me just get up. Yeah, that's starting to mat there. It's so easy to separate it because it's a good wire coat and it's dead and it's just, I mean, that's without any effort at all. 
I mean, to be fair, I could have her fully stripped off in about 20 minutes, but I'm not going to because that's not the point of the exercise. Okay, so she's well overdue a trim, but this is exactly what we're just trying to show you. You see, there's a patch there where you've taken out. You can see just a, a little bit of undercoat just, yeah. just here underneath. I mean, she's got a layer underneath. So all this long stuff is just ready to come out. So if you've got a white fox terrier, and it's coat starting to mat like this, and it's really long and really blown, the easiest way for you to manage it is literally just taking the tips of the hair and pulling. And I personally, if I was trimming that, I wouldn't try to brush it first. No. When what, it's matted up like that, point. it's... No, don't try and brush a coat. If you've got a coat that's completely blown like this, and it's starting to mat, and starting to twine with each other, do not try brushing that out. There is no point. You just need to, good girl, yeah. You just need to pull it apart so you've got little bits and pull. And, and I'm sure like, you can see, like when people go on about hand trimming a wire coat being cruel, you can see with this bitch, she doesn't even really realise that's happening. She just thinks she's having a little bit of a pet, you know. So... And let me tell you, this is a Welsh Terrier. Those of you that have Welsh Terriers will know if a Welsh Terrier doesn't like anything, they sure as heck will tell you. So, literally, do not panic. If your coat, you've got a We've just got a question coat. coming through here, Rachel. Um, what age would you start to strip? Okay. Um, my puppies have normally... <clears throat> excuse my puppy, I went on. Well, my puppies I uh, sell... Basically, they normally have all their puppy fluff off before they go to the first to their new homes. So by 12 weeks, I've normally removed everything. What I then advise people to do is to see their groomer in the first four weeks and go and have um, some puppy introduction lessons. So the pups, when they leave me, they're used to being on the table, they're used to having a bath, they're used to being handled. And if they maintain that with a new groomer, then it means um, they don't forget all that and it's not such a bit of a battle in education then when they take them and they've left them too long and it's six months old. Um, really, if you've not had, like this pup down here that I showed you that was still in a full puppy coat, um, she really needs doing now. So they need doing by the time they're four and a half months old, really five months old. Um, and they need that for the education on the table um, and having a bit of a health check as well as actually getting the coats managed. Um, when they first go to the groomers for a uh, puppy visit, it should literally be about socialisation and just meeting the puppy and just giving them a brush. They shouldn't be pulling them about too much, but the second or third visit, yeah, they should be starting to trim, that, trim nails and pulling out coat and things. And we've got another question here, uh, which is not really one right answer to. How often would you advise a fox terrier going to the groomer to be stripped? Right, it depends on what you want. If you want, if you like the hair, hair look, that's really cute for some people, and you don't mind it blowing like this, you can probably get away with two to three times a year. That said, um, if you like them to be reasonably well maintained, and you don't mind it getting a bit longer and a bit thicker, but you don't want this full shaggy look, um, then you're probably looking at every eight to 10 weeks. If you want them looking really smart, you're looking probably every six weeks. Um, but again, it's about what how you want your dog to look and also what your dog's coat's like. You know, um, some dogs um, have a coat that's very easy to manage and doesn't grow very quickly and they come every eight weeks to me. I've got other dogs that come to me and they need to trim every six weeks because they grow like bilio, like they just grow so quickly. Right, you missus, let's get you out of the way. Just watch where you tread in, you little pups have left you a little present. Oh, <laughs> Probably now want to grab your boy off the yard, don't you, and just go through brushing out. First, I oh, okay, think. yeah, it's probably a good idea. Let's have another, um, another go with this. Sorry, my friends, I just need to do a bit of a mock exercise. Mm. The joys of having puppies in the room. Mm. Doesn't matter when you've got dogs, the one thing you probably find that is using a mop. Mm. Right, so equipment. 
equipment. Um, I know a lot of guys at home won't have all the equipment or smoky leg movements I've got, um, but I do suggest that really. You know, I'll put that basic supply in there. I do suggest um, having somewhere. Um, allocated to be able to have a go at grooming your dog. Do not try doing it on the floor at their level. Um, you're liable to get bitten. You're not going to be able to handle your dog effectively. Mm. They are better up on a tabletop. It needs to be non-slippy um, so they don't feel insecure. Um, if you can afford to purchase a small grooming table and arm, I would suggest you do it. Um, some of them can be found second hand and on different auction sites and marketplace and all sorts of things. They don't have to be brand new. Um, so most tables have just got a top like this. Um, uh, uh, this one's a table that goes around and up and down because of the amount of work I do. But small static tables are fine. Um, there are different arms you can get. Um, this is what we call an H bar and it gives us far more support with some dogs that might be real wriggly worms. Um, normally you can get a grooming arm that sort of comes halfway. It's just a grooming arm um, with just one strap. And that's normally fine for you guys at home. You don't really need an H bar to be honest. Um, we have also got air dowels and this is quite helpful for air dowels. That yeah, one's bigger, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, um, so normally just a standard grooming arm and a stable tabletop is fine. Years ago, I'm going to show my age now, we used to trim on card tables. And those of you of an, maybe an older range, age range like me, you know, the old green top card tables. Um, I've got a fold up one in the house, I've still got it actually. And a lot of people used to go to shows with those and trim at home with them because they used to fold up and they used to be really good. Um, Anything that you can have a non-slip flat surface. It hasn't got to be, you know, something that was purpose bought for us. Although obviously, if you can afford it, that's great. Um, so, um, the thing about grooming equipment as well is, this is obviously you've just seen me using this. This is a grooming noose. Um, one of the fatal mistakes people make with using these when they're using them at home and aren't used to it and you've really had no input on how to use it is they sort of have it at this length and put the dog's head in there and they leave it there and they think that's fine so the dog's got all this room to move around the table this has two functions safety and control and I know um, people from some of our European friends that you know um, grooming arms and nooses aren't really allowed anymore at shows but this is aimed towards pet people at home you need some way of making sure your dog's controlled so you can handle it more effectively and that it's safe it's not just going to leap off the table the double edge of that sword is you never put a dog on a table and put a noose on it and walk off to answer the phone or put the kettle on or go to the toilet if you're going to do that take your dog off the table or let the phone ring or wait till you have your drink because if your dog leaps off the table while it's wearing one of these and you're not here you can't it's going to strangle itself to death okay and i know that sounds really horrific and really frightening and i'm glad it does because it is don't do it so these are great but you've got to be sensible like all things in life. So never leave a dog unattended on a table with a grooming noose on attached to a grooming arm. Um, so the thing with this is it needs to be at the appropriate length. And that can either be by moving the bar on the side of the grooming arm to a length that you want. I have a particularly long grooming noose because I trim everything from miniature wired axons up to airedales. And me, I just wrap it round, you know, to whatever length I want really. So it's very variable. I actually quite like these that just clip on and off because they're really easy to manage. Um, and I do like them when they've got a swivel. So when the dog turns round, 
they're actually not strangling themselves by just twisting that this around and around and around and making right. this tighter and tighter. So, little nooses. Quite important, but need to be used appropriately. Um, right, other basic equipment. I am only going to, I'm not going to show a lot of the stuff we use from a show point of view. I want to show you some of the things you can just buy to do what you need to do at home. So, standard pin brush. And with, for um, Welsh and wires, it's better to get those without the little bally things on the yeah, end. Yeah, don't it? get the ones with the bally things on the end because they just rip the carrot head. A pin brush. A trimming knife, but you have got a finger and thumb, which you've just seen while I was doing Sky. Um, one of the most um, useful trimming knives around at the moment is the White Fox Terrier Association trimming knife. I mean, I know I'm on the committee and we're doing this for them, but honestly, we're shipping these out across the world. Um, we've got a slight delay in getting them out, but they can be ordered, paid for, and we are getting them out to people. Um, they're on the website, and Jacqueline's the one who deals with the sales of trimming knives for us on the committee. Um, this is an FL2B, which would be a bit like a bit of a medium, which I think for most pet owners is good to go. You don't need to be doing extra fine work. There is a whole range for those there trimming knives. And they but do left decided, and right yeah. handies. They do do left and right We handies. decided to pick one, and Rachel will show she's going to do the whole of the dog with that knife later, just to prove the point. That is the only yeah. one you need if you're only going to buy one. A comb, sounds simple. Just get a nice simple comb with closed teeth and white teeth. It'll do what you need it to do. It hasn't got to be anything fancier. A block of chalk is really useful. If you can, a pair of thinning scissors and a pair of scissors. Now, really, I should say to you, you don't need them at all. You can do your dog complete with your block of chalk, a knife, your comb and your brush. But we're talking to a wide range of audience that have got dogs in all states of coat. And we know groomers do full strips and they do pet strips. And our understanding of pet strips, when we do a pet strip is, they will hand strip body coats and legs, but they will clip heads and fronts and clip up, clip up bums. Or thinning scissors around sanitary area up bums, okay, and clip fronts. If your dog's been having that done, you don't want to be pulling that, okay, because it's not fair to them. It's great managing their coat, their body coat, but you're not going to suddenly start pulling off around their bum in the sanitary area when they've never been having it done. So a pair of thinning scissors is probably as important than just a pair of scissors because these you can do around feet, up bums, you know, around the edges of ears if you're really careful. Um, and you can lift mats up from between toes and get them out. But I'll go into that in a minute. Um, a grooming spray, I actually do think um, this is good even for pet owners. I think it's a nice way to condition leg hair. And if you've got really badly matty guys at home, um, it just helps ease and tease the coat apart a little bit. Um, and it also stops it matting up itself it does. as well, it doesn't it? Really if you don't like the matted, matted look. <laughs> if you haven't got any grooming spray and you really want to set forth this weekend, Get a bit of normal hair conditioner in the bottom of a little bottle and top it up with water so it's really diluted and just give it a good shake. Your best hair conditioner in the bathroom will do it. Just give it a shake so it's diluted and use that. Okay? You can always wash your dog out later so it all comes out. Okay? You haven't got to soak them. And that is just another bit of a myth, bit. isn't it, that you can't yeah. bath a wire coat. Yeah, and you can bath a wire so. coat, but... So, okay. that's your basic grooming equipment. For the guys, get rid of all of this. Right, I'm going to put one of my clowns on the table. Oh. Um, he did go to Crufts, but he hasn't been trimmed since. I haven't done any trimming for the last few weeks. Um, but I'm going to show, put him on the table. Go on, boy. Because... Good boy. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, guys. He's a bit of a handful. So he's a good one to talk about with handling dogs on the table and how to maintain safety. Steady. You can't have to, Tina's got his attention. <laughs> he's in love with Tina. Him. Get so he's got a good image of him now. 
When you're in love with tea, uh -huh. get your head in there. See, that's a perfect example. That'll be too useful. I don't want to strangle you, but... Right, he's quite a young dog, but he's a lot of boy. He's quite strong, he's quite powerful to handle on the table. Um, and he's a bit of a goofball, he's a bit of a clown, he just can't help himself. So he's got quite a bit of, he had quite a nice coat on him and it's just starting to grow out now. Um, from a um, coat management point of view, I will take his coat down and top all this right back. Um, I'm not going to do that on him today, but what I am going to use him for is to show you how to brush out leg hair. Um, right. When groomers talk about grooming dogs, they normally talk about three aspects, which is flat work, body work and furnishings. And they'll also talk about rolling coats. So I'll talk about rolling coats first. It doesn't really apply... Um, for the pet sector, when we talk about, but I'm gonna go through it so you do understand. So when we talk about rolling coats, it's about where we're trimming dogs once or twice a week um, and actually building layers of coat. I mean, the reason, one of the other things about hand trimming is we're controlling the timing of the growth of the coat. So if we want more coat for a certain show or we're not worried about it and we can take it back a bit, we can have different layers in the coat to time as we're growing it. So we're controlling the density and the thickness of the coat that we're getting. So when we're trimming re regularly, we get a rolling coat going, which means it's never really out of coat. It's constantly something there. From a pet point of view, the closest to a rolling coat is maybe a dog that you're getting trimmed every six to eight weeks, which in a show term isn't a true rolling coat. But if your groomers have got your dogs to a situation where when they top them off, they come down to a nice layer, that's a rolling coat for that dog in that situation. So, um, you know, you guys are obviously going to be missing that because you're going to be missing those time slots. So your dogs might be going eight weeks, 10 weeks, 12 weeks, 16 weeks. So of course, then they're starting to grow out. I've really got two choices with him at the minute. He has got layers in his coat. So for me, with my experience, obviously I can top this off back down to another layer and I can keep working it and he'll be kept in a more of a show rolling coat. Um, otherwise, if I think, right, we're not going to have any shows for the rest of the year, I could just leave this dog now, leave him a month, six weeks, let it all grow out to curly whirly status, it will be about this long, because he grows like mushrooms, <laughs> so he's in about six weeks he'd have coat like this, and then I could just take it all right back. Um, another thing I hear about is, oh my god, my dog gets hand stripped and they're pink. It's not the end of the world and it's okay. <laughs> We have skin, Mexican hairless have skin, wire coats are meant to come out. It's all right, it's all rough, don't worry. And now's the time to do it if you don't like your dog looking pink because nobody will see it because you can't go anywhere. Don't worry about it. I'm not advocating all dogs should be made to look pink, I'm not saying that at all. But when you take some coat off, it has been into blown, it will come down really close. You know, you'll have a, a wire layer, you'll have an undercoat layer and you'll have skin. And the girl I am going to trim for you shortly, I've trimmed half of her and she is down pink, down the shoulders and the neck. Okay. But this boy is mystified by the... We've got some people asking about, uh, you know, um, colour, like really dark colour and some go for hand trimming yeah. and they come back and they don't have the colour. So I, <laughs> I'm sure you'd love to mention Coke Kings and Ferminators on that note. Bin them. <laughs> Um, I know some groomers do use Ferminators and yeah, they do use Coke King and they can be a useful tool and they are kind of a halfway ground between clipping a dog and hand trimming a dog. But personally, Rachel and I don't like them. We don't own one and we would never use one. But that is our opinion. And I'd never advocate for a pet owner to have one. Yeah, either. and any that we do trimming for other people we strictly tell them not to use a coat king because it it really our job is a bit pointless because we can't really do our job to it's better if they just bath and brush them and do nothing else than it is if they start coat king in the coat because it really it damages a lot of the work we've done pulling the coats so 
this boy, considering he's quite a boisterous young man, he's a friendly soul, um, and he's quite a young dog, so everything's a blooming down to him. Excuse me one moment. <laughs> Children, thank you. You uh, somebody else something. has just asked as well with the pink skin, is there anything you can spray on your dog to soothe the skin? Well, just because it's pink doesn't mean to say it's sore. No, and if it's sore, that's really a bit of a and technique issue. This is different. You know, these guys under their white have got pink skin. That's natural. Um, if they've got inflamed skin or angry skin, that is a different matter altogether. Um, and I'll, I'll talk about that in a bit as well. Let me get to brushing him out. So, just about handling. Like I said, he's quite a boisterous boy. Um, if you've got a very energetic choir, let them go out in the garden and run themselves silly before you try. Which is exactly what he's been doing. <laughs> he's been out having a good run this morning before I put him on this table just to get the wind out of his sails. Um, we have a friendly, forward, fearless breed. They're a powerful dog, um, and he's a lot of dog. He's up to size for the breed, which is another issue, but never mind. Um, um, yeah, so for those, talk, just there's a few questions coming through about ear health. We'll probably talk yeah. about that on the girl that we've already half trimmed. So, I'm going to brush his legs out. So, handling him. A hand down the back is really reassuring and calming. You don't want a forceful touch. You don't want to tickle them and go, a nice boy, because you're just going to encourage them to be silly. Don't talk to them like they're a three-year-old. Oh, aren't you a nice boy? Be a good boy on the table. This is like a child going to school time. This is education time. Table time is as much about learning manners and behaviour as it is about grooming, okay? This is the time you can put them on the table check them over to see that they're okay and give them a groom or just a brush and even if you're going to brush them and not pull any hair i would still use a table to do it so that they learn this is their desk and this is where they do their work okay so just there's somebody asking more questions about um grey coat when their parents have them hand trim it can also be that they've come down to their undercoat as well yes. can't it so and it would depend if does that black coat come back through afterwards or just does it stay grey it might be a dog that has is the white coat it's a very hard to say without seeing the dog is the white coat a very harsh wire coat um, or does it have a bit of a softer coat all over is it a dog that has a lot of undercoat and that because it's being trimmed not as often as what we would trim, now obviously like every week, is it a dog that obviously has a lot of undercoat but that's never getting taken out before it gets to see the groomer again. Yeah. So it doesn't mean to say the groomer's doing a bad job, but it could be technique, um, it could be coat type. <laughs> I think these two should go somewhere before they start <laughs> redesigning the room, little stinkers. Okay. So. <laughs> I'm just going to put a little bit of spray in his legs because at some point, although he's been running around in the field area, in the compound area, I would like to get him back in the ring at some point. Now, when you're using sprays, be careful around the dog's eyes. You don't need to be spraying them in the face, um, into their eyes. Just put a bit into the whiskers. That grooming spray that Rachel's using, if people do want to pay a little bit more, it, it, it is, it's really our favourite um, yeah. conditioning spray. That's the Crown Royale number three. There are three different um, sorts. For a wire-coated terrier breed, you want number three, if anybody's so, after the Crown Royale. While that's just soaking in, I would do a quick check on this dog, as I would do with any dogs that come for grooming. So I'm going to have a look at his teeth. Are they dirty? Has he got any damaged? Is he fine? His teeth are good. He's got no problems. His ears, are there ear canals? Is there any inflammation? Do they smell? Put your nose down to your dog's ear and have a smell. Does it smell? Uh, for weird? those asking about um, getting undercoat out, uh, Rachel will get to that on yeah. this dog um, in a bit uh, without using a coat king or a furminator. <laughs> so, you know. Has he got inflamed ears? Has he got waxy ears? Has he got sore ears? No, his ears are hairy, but they're good. Feet, nails. Yep, he needs his nails tipping. He doesn't need them whopping off, but he does need the tips taking off them. And even more um, important than checking the toes is checking the dew claw. Dew claws. 
So you can see he has got dew claws. Most dogs in the UK, I'd say now, do tend to have dew claws. They don't have them removed. These grow, these get missed really easily and they grow around back and into the leg. That can be really painful for dogs. And the thing with a dew claw is, because they're not in contact with the floor, even if you walk them on concrete, which will keep their other nails down and things, it won't keep the dew claw down. So it's really important to check dew claws. And some dogs will have those on the back legs as well. Yeah, I think we should put the puppies outside to play because they're having fun. Go on, Go on, Good boy. Come on, Good boy. Um, and another thing with males as well, and with the girls when you get them in a low boy, just put your, I mean to lift them, just put your hands underneath the back of them and lift them. You're not going to hurt them. That doesn't mean say you've got to dig into their private parts or dig in underneath. Just support them. Um, with boys, while you've got your hand underneath there, just put your hand there and you can feel their private <laughs> We've just got a, a comment here about people having dogs with issues with having their feet touched, which is yes. really, really, really yes. common in these yes. breeds, isn't Absolutely. it? Yes. And this is where your handling tips and tricks yeah. really can help. Yeah. So just finishing your quick health check of your dog and your girl. Does your boy's bits feel even and normal? And I know that sounds an odd thing to be doing when you're grooming, but you'd be amazed how many dogs, especially as they're getting older, can end up with a strangulated testicle or um, a growth on one. And, you know, when you put your dog on the table for grooming, you know, it's a good chance to check them over just quickly. You ain't got to be standing there feeling them for half an hour. You know, just put your hand, do that feel like they're normally doing? Yeah, do job done. You know, girls, have they got any discharge? Does anything look unusual? Fine, job done. Um, so just a basic check on your, on, on your dog. So, uh, feet, we're about to do feet, this will be good. So, what do you need to brush out leg hair? What we call furnishings, yes, I'll do that first. So, what we call furnishings is the face hair here on the front of the muzzle, the leg hair, front and back, and then underline. What we call flat work is the top of the head, the ears, the sides of the head, down the neck, and down the shoulders. And the triangle area, not the back of the tail. All down the back of the neck, the sides and the top, that's what we call body coat. So yeah, flat work, body coat and furnishing. So if I'm talking about that as we go along, because that's the terminology I'm used to using, that's what I'm referring to. Uh, we got people now asking about bathing prior to yeah. hand trimming. No. Well, the only thing you might bath, depending on how your routine works, really is the furnishings, isn't it? Well, yes, but I don't think I, I generally wouldn't. No. I tend to... Um, uh, trim and bath afterwards unless they're obviously covered in horse crap, mud, grass, half the field. Obviously you don't want to be trimming that in or pulling that out. If they need dosing, you know, yes, by all means, wash the legs, wash the face, get the excess out before you do it. Um, but then you need to make sure that they're dried off. So, I, um, with furnishings, usually do face, underline, back legs and front legs. And I do that because it suits us from when we're managing show troops. But it also sets a routine. So I, I personally would deviate from that a little bit if I got a really headstrong dog on, dog on the table because the front is the bitey end. If you've got something and, or you've never had a dog on the table, then you might want to start at the back feet. But if you've got something like this dog, which although he hasn't had a lot of table time, it, he is a, he's a fairly sensible boy. He's just boisterous. It's perfectly fine to start at the head. Yeah, I agree with that, Dave. If you have got something that's not used to it and they are particularly boisterous, I would start at the rear end. But generally, uh, this would be my routine. And it also means then you know whether you've missed something or not. Right, a couple of things with the pin brush. You do not need to be raking through faces like this and legs through this. Pin brushes are designed to be used in a specific manner. And that is to move the hair and lift it away from the area that you're working. Um, and it brings the mats to the surface, 
it doesn't pull on the dog. Um, you just need to be mindful when you're using it around the face that you're not stabbing them in the ears or stabbing them in the eyes or stabbing them in the muzzle. You know, they're not going to slap it in and do it. It's a gentle tool to use. So I would start with it on the top of the face and you literally move it forwards and back and out. That is literally all I'm doing. And if it's been matted and dirty, you're going to have to do this for a little while. It's not going to happen in two seconds flat. It's not hurting the dog. It should be just helping lift the mats and the tangles to the surface and lifting the hair away from the skin area. And that's all you're aiming to do. This is not a process that you rush when you're grooming your dog. Your dog should actually enjoy the process and enjoy spending the time with you. The reason that they tend not to is because it's class and they don't want you to, they don't want to stand and do what you want them to do. It's not that it's hurting them. So already you can see his hair is now standing away from his face. And doing it um, gently side to side, it sort of has a couple of functions. Um, one is sort of to tease the mats out. And two, it, it is a much kinder way of doing it than if you rip through the leg hair. Because if you, if you brush right up and down the leg hair um, and don't do this sort of gentle side to side and out movement, one, you'll rip the coat out and two, you will find it's more uncomfortable for the dog. And with wires, they learn really, really quickly. And if you do something that's rough and uncomfortable, it will make the whole process of trimming much harder and it can take a lot of time to unlearn those unwanted behaviours if it's been done in an uncomfortable way. And, uh, and we've got a question here about would you use a slicker brush on the furnishings? No. And we don't really ever use slicker brushes on these breeds. Um, you know, if, if we have other breeds come in, oh, what's an example of something you would use a slicker brush on? Um, like a cockapoo or something, you'll use it on those, won't you? Now we get lots of cockapoos coming through these days. Um, but on, on these guys, we would only really gently side to side and out, even on um, a pet dog that comes in quite matted, because um, we want to try and save as much leg hair as we can. If we can't get a brush to it in that way, we're probably going to want to take the whole coat off all over, including leg hair and everything, um, because it's not really fair um if you if you're brushing out great big mats it's not really fair on the dog and it's much kinder just to pull those mats out like we showed with um the, the welsh terrier earlier that was in a full-blown coat you can pull leg hair out it is fine it will grow it just takes a really really long time right so from legs this is where we start with the good bits with the feet and work up so terriers and i'm going to say hounds particularly dachshunds hate generally having their feet messy. They're quite protective of them, they're quite sensitive of them, um, and they can get quite honorary about it. Um, again, a lot of this is about training time practice. Some dogs never learn to like it, but if you start at an early age, if you've got a puppy, when you've got it on the table, you haven't necessarily got to do anything with its feet, but start by getting them used to you handling their legs, picking up their feet, having a look, putting your hand on their pads flat, and that just gets them used we to you touching their feet. We just move this out the way because I can't see very well. That just gets, if you've got young dogs, getting them used to you touching their feet. You're not actually doing anything, but it's just getting them used to you holding and messing their feet. He's pretty good. But even he will have a look, what are you doing with my feet? You know? But if you do this when you've got your pups and you keep doing it without actually doing anything physically, as in pulling hair or cutting hair or trimming hair, good boy. They will get used to the touch. You want to be able to get to the point where you can hold a pad in your hand and look between the pads because you need to be able to check if there's any hair matted, if they've got any seeds in there. Yeah, so you need foot. to be able to, without pulling their toes horribly apart, just tease them apart and you can put your fingers between their pads and you can feel if they've got any mats 
or if they've got any um, bits of gravel or grass seeds in there. It doesn't take long, but you should be able to do that with all their feet. Okay. And you need to be able to touch your dog's feet because if they have got grass seeds in there, you need to be able to get them out. If they have got mats in there, you need to be able to get them out. And you can either do that by finger pulling out grass seeds or using a pair of scissors and cleaning out the hair between their pads. But if you've got a dog that's not used to you doing that, you need to build up to it by having them on the table and spending time touching their feet and them getting used to doing that. So using a pin brush to brush their leg hair, I would start at the back feet, right from above, right above the pads between the hocks. And again, exactly the same motion, forward, back and out. And already you can see it's lifting the hair away from the skin. It's lifting the tangles up. He's got a lovely couple of tangles here. It's not harsh. It's not heavy handed. And just be aware when you're holding your dog's paw, you're not trying to get him to do the ballerina splits. You're not pushing his stifles up in together and his hocks into him. You're just holding it at a comfortable height for him. I know it might seem that we're banging on a lot about handling here and you know people obviously are really interested in the trimming but I'll say uh, Rachel and I have been involved in quite a lot of the grooming days and and really with most people that are really really struggling to do anything with their dogs it does come down to managing your dog on the table and you know He's not knowing some of these legs. tricks. Dave's <laughs> quite enjoying that. He's stretching his leg out for me. Look at him, dopey door, you know, bless him. He's a good boy, yeah. Thank God I wore you out running around the yard earlier. So we do that both sides. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. And just be aware, it's going to be a bit sensitive on the hair. It's his personal area. So you want to be have a very light touch. And just be aware, he's standing on three legs. He is going to get tight. So he is going to want to put his leg down. Finish the short though. And I'll just do the same under the foot. Okay. So there you can see the difference between the two legs. And it's only taken a minute or two to do that. Okay. And obviously that leg is not groomed yet, but we've just got it to the point where it's just lightly pin brushed out. And do the same with the other legs. Good boy. Good boy. You stand forward. Good boy. I know. Did you hear the door? Eh? Did you? Good boy. You're going to be unbalanced if you keep looking behind, aren't you, while we're doing this? And I know this might seem a really boring thing to watch, but it's just the necessity to stretch your leg out for me, good boy. I don't know. And I think from the dog's perspective, for those of you that are at home in lockdown that can't get to the groomers and have never really done any grooming of any description, if all you can do is bath and brush out your dog, that'll make a huge yeah. difference for them. Even, and it'll make a huge difference when they can go back to your groomers on what they can achieve with the coat. Even if you can't comb your dog out, like Dave says, if you can bath them, bath their legs and just brush them out, it's something. I'm going to do the same with the front legs, and as you can see, there isn't hardly, hardly any hair in that brush. Uh, if it was a, if it was, if he was getting ready for a show, I'd cry if I'd got that much hair in my brush. <laughs> that um, but obviously, he's not going anywhere for a while, and he hasn't been brushed out for a while. So again, front legs. He's just come round the other yeah. side of you because people probably can't see from here. So I'm going to start at the base. Hello, boy. <laughs> And this is a good point as well. Put it down there. Good boy. Yeah. I need to have a look. So, they often get mats between the toes here. And this is a really sensitive area on them. So, you need to just have a look. 
and lift the hair if you can upwards and see if there's any mats and what's going on there and see if there's any problems. Wires have a great knack of pulling nails, um, getting infected toenail beds. Oh, I think it's their dream in life. We've um, got a couple of people that have asked now about um, where to get brushes from. Right. I'm not sure. What we're going to do is I will um, do a list. Yeah, um, obviously, we're based in the UK for those of you that are from overseas. But I'll do a list and we'll put a page up on the um, website for the White Fox Terrier Association where you can have a look. All right, when we've finished, we'll sort all that out. Good boy. So right underneath, same thing, forward, back and out, all up the legs. For those that are saying, you know, like they didn't know how to use a pin brush properly and things like that, yeah. you know, this isn't necessarily the way you have to do it and it's not the way everybody will show you to do it. It's just what Rachel and I do. And, you know, we, we do it for good reasons, like we said, so we don't pull out the coat and things. But, you know, you, you don't necessarily have to do it like this and people might tell you different. We're just showing you guys what works for us. Yeah. And yeah, like um, Tina's just pointed out, you can use a terrier pad for this. A lot of people like terrier yeah. pads. Terrier pads are good. The only thing with a terrier pad is they have shorter teeth than a pin brush does. So if you use a pin brush, you're going to get down further and lift. you'll get right down to the skin gently and you'll lift the coat out further away from the skin. But terrier pads are good as a touch up or just a quick brush through. Let's just pinbush out his legs. Let's go around here so everyone can see a bit better. Fluffy Amy Mary. <laughs> so, using a comb. This sounds really simple, I know. But we've got two sets of teeth on the comb. Wide teeth and narrow teeth. For him, I will use the wide teeth. If I find a particularly nasty mat or tangle, I will try and tease it apart with my fingers on him and then use the small teeth to get it out. If I've got a pet dog coming in, I would still do the same principle, but if it was a really, really nasty mat and this dog, the dog that was coming in normally has hand trimmed legs, I would probably put a little bit extra spray in and just let it leave for another minute or two before I do. There's, you don't really need to be yanking mats out, to put it bluntly, you know? They can be teased and helped along. So literally, He's got grubby whiskers. I'm just going to lift it up, brush it back gently. So he's got a nice mat there. And hopefully you can appreciate there, Rachel's doing quite a small section at a time. Yeah. Um, once you've got most of the mats out, you know, you can uh, go, go through more length of hair in one go. But when you, you're still teasing out mats, you don't really want to be... Pulling it through a whole load of mats all in one go because that will be uncomfortable for the dog. You know, grooming is not a quick process. It's not something that you think, oh, I've got 10 minutes, I'll do the dog. Well, it's right if you've got 10 minutes and you just want to put your hands on them and check them over, but not if you're actually going to spend time brushing them out and putting a comb through them. You need to allow yourself plenty of time. This shouldn't be a rushed exercise at all. If you start rushing, a, you won't do it properly. B, your dog's not going to get any enjoyment from it and he's going to fight you because you're rushing. And thirdly, it's not teaching him calmness and manners when he's on the table because you will be rushing. Uh, one golden rule we have here is anything you do on one side of the dog, you make sure in that yes. grooming session you do on the other. Yes, always balance, evenness. So, if you've only got time to brush their face out and comb their face out, do both sides. Don't just do one side, because all the little bits you're taking out is stimulating growth. And even these little bits that have just come out from doing him, they're going to be growing again, and it will grow unevenly. Hello, mister. Oh, has got a face under there. <laughs> What's going on out there? 
So, grooming out underlines are pretty much easy. I'll probably turn you around that way. Good boy. So, grooming out an underline actually starts at the front of the dog because their chest hair. Just going to grab the chart just to make sure we don't cut out halfway through and <laughs> get plugged in. <laughs> There we go. So, just lifting a front leg and combing down underneath. See? So if you've got any tangles, use the wide tooth of the comb and just comb down and they should come out. And I'd say when we do grooming for people that do do a little bit of work at home, the one place people always seem to leave mats is underneath the, the armpit. So make sure you get right in there to really... Please. Do not be tempted to scissor under the armpits. Either pull it, comb it out, you only need to take a few hairs at a time. If you start scissoring it, it will mat even worse and it will become uncomfortable for the dog. So that's it. Underline's pretty good actually, considering. I think his playmates have been helping him. <laughs> Come here, Mr. Man. Right, I'm just trying to think how the best I'll come this way and do a front leg now. You're very interested in what I'm doing, aren't you, Mr? You're supposed to be focusing on Rachel. Right. <laughs> so, yeah, if I sit there, that might be easier. Yes, hello, nice to see you. Nice to see you. And make it fun with them, you know. I mean, you don't want them getting over excited and silly, but there's no reason why you can't talk to them. and. Just let them know that you are acknowledging that they're there and that they're being good and what that they're participating. Hi. He's a very nosy boy. So, mm -hmm. comb nose. Again, like I said, start from between the toes and just lift it up. He needs his nails tipping. And then what you would do, start from the toes and lift it up and out towards you. If at this stage you're really struggling to get your comb through, just get your pin brush and just gently tease the coat side to side again, you know, just because you picked up your comb, it doesn't mean you have to stick with it, yeah. go back to your pin brush. And don't try working huge areas at a time, just work a small area. And then if you come across a really bad mat, you can separate it out, get the wide toothy comb, just try and lift it from the base and then get your small teeth in, okay? You're not trying to, like, you know, do the whole leg in one fell swoop. So up and out towards you and on the side of the leg. And then while you're here, you can just brush that out at the back of the leg and behind the pads. That's often quite a knotted area. And sometimes if you're holding the pad in your paw and you've got your fingers underneath. In your paw. <laughs> in your paw you can feel it with your finger behind. And you think, oh, there's a mat there. So if you know you've got a bad mat there, you might want to stand more towards the back of the dog working forwards, which I'll show you in a minute. And then once you've got that all brushed up, you can actually manage to then put your comb through it and back comb your leg hair up. So you know it's tangle free. That's not helpful. Just to give people a bit of an idea as well about when this dog was last brushed out, it was probably about a week or two ago, you know, so he, he hasn't been left a long, long time. Um, and even in that time, you will start to get a few mats. If you're doing something that hasn't had a brush for, you know, 8, 10, 12 weeks, like Rachel says, you're going to have to work a lot longer with your pin brush, just um, teasing the hair apart. <laughs> So like I said, if you find you've got a mat behind the paw, Get sorry, better angle. You know, you're better at coming at it from this <laughs> you angle. Not for you, you, mister. You're better off coming at it from this angle and Good getting boy. your comb in it. If your dog's paws are really badly matted here, which they can be on some pets, because they dig and they go foraging, I mean, I have been known to actually take the thinning scissors under here and thin out a mat under here. Um, and then I try not to, if I can help it, but I have been known to because this can just be such a horrible area on pets that gets really badly matted. And because it's quite close to the dew claw as well, his dew claw's just there. 
That's it just there. Because it's dew claws, you can get really horrible mats around the dew claw. And you need to be mindful when you are combing out that you don't catch the dew claws in your comb because they can be ripped out if you're heavy handed. It will hurt the dog. They will scream and they won't be happy about you um, touching their feet and messing with them. So that's... Uh, people, uh, i just got a bit of a question there about the dog licking. Is that a sign he's uncomfortable? Now, lip licking and lip smacking can be a sign that it's uncomfortable. But this is this dog just, just being himself. You know, he's not showing me any other behavioural signs that he's uncomfortable. Um, you know, he's just being a very interested Clint. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's a good uh, I'd say with a lot of the terrier breeds, they do tend, if they're unhappy with something, to tell you quite forcefully, quite easily, compared to some, some other breeds that what we might have, um, which is why it's really important to make sure, you know, you've got your neck strap and things tight, because if you do do something, you know, uh, and we all do it, you know, you'll catch a bit of a mat that's a bit bigger than you thought it was, and it's a bit uncomfortable, and the dog might yelp out, and some of those, you know, they will go to try to bite you, and if you've got your neck strap too short, there's a good chance you'll get caught, because they're pretty quick. Don't be afraid if you've got something really, really difficult to use a muzzle. I mean, you, you know, you, I'm sure you can all appreciate this dog really doesn't need a muzzle. Um, yeah, I mean, if you've got a dog that's, you know, you think's going to be a bit mousy, you know, you've got to protect him and you. Do not hesitate to use a muzzle. I mean, I would recommend normally a basket muzzle because the dog still can breathe. They can get their, their tongues out to pant a little bit. Um, if they're getting warm, um, I don't like fabric or nylon muscles that close mouths completely. I think dogs overheat with them and I don't trust them. Um, I have had dogs break basket muscles. Um, I've had a couple, I've had one particular ferocious dog that I do um, that comes in and he always has to have a muzzle on um, and he's broken a couple over the years. Uh, but it is really rare and it's uh, normally a highly irregular occurrence to be honest um so and i usually use a size bigger than what's actually needed and people go oh my god why would you do that because i don't want the dog to feel confined and restricted i just want to maintain safety if you're making a dog feel confined and restricted then you're making him fearful and anxious grooming shouldn't make them feel anxious and fearful they should actually enjoy the process and enjoy being with you. We do have quite a lot of dogs that we inherit from other groomers that are unruly, uncontrollable, too savage to groom. And it, uh, we've never had a dog that we haven't been able to groom in some capacity come through the door. And we usually find when we've had them two or three times and they get used to the fact that, you know, what we're doing, we are doing it in a gentle, sympathetic manner and we are using a lot of positive reinforcement with the dogs. We do usually find we can groom most dogs. If you've got a dog that's really being behavioural and difficult on the table, it might be as much about the handling and the experiences that dog's had in the past as what it is about the dog just being difficult. I mean, there are some dogs that are just more difficult, but most of them you can get to a stage where they don't hugely fight you. They're few and far, you know, really difficult to manage dogs are really few and far between. But it is about patience and tolerance. If you're having a bit of a shitty day, or you're feeling cheesed off, or you're feeling a bit irritable, don't groom your dog. Go and dig a hole in the garden. Go and do something completely different. Can we plug this into the main power because we're getting low battery? Just click into that. Is that on? Had you got it plugged in? Yeah, but it wasn't charging from that for some reason. Oh, you did have to push the thing on the side? No. Oh, I didn't realise I needed to. <laughs> Sorry, folks, just having a bit of a technology blip. Just trying to make sure we keep power and don't lose you all. Huh. No, it's not having it plugged no, in. Let's plug it into the computer. Oh. Tell you, it's a good job I'm good with people and dogs because I'm bloody useless with anything else. There you go. Hey. I don't know if that's charging or not now. I don't want to go off the video, so... Yeah, you can move that a bit. Is that alright? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good boy. <laughs> no. 
my phone's over there. Do you want to just switch that off just in case that loses? If this loses battery, then at least that will have battery. Yeah, that's fine. Got a patrol on? Boom. Lovely. So, yeah, uh, Julie, in terms of can you groom a puppy in the, the same way we are now? Yes. yes, you can do everything exactly the same. You might need to be a little bit more patient because they are puppies. They, you know, they won't know anything. It's all new for them. But you can do everything exactly the same. Don't Just try sense. not to do too much in one go with a puppy. Um, and try to make sure you keep it as fun as you can for you and the puppy. You need to switch that off. I don't know how to switch that off. All right. You uh, and you'll find with a lot of puppies because they don't know anything any different with the terrier breeds but they're usually quite smart puppies um they will test the water with you a little bit and they they will sorry siri just interfering um they will try uh, to see what they can and can't get away with so even though you don't want to you know be harsh with the handling you do need to be fairly firm and consistent if you've got a puppy that's absolutely throwing itself, lunging itself everywhere on the table, um, you know, you do need to get a really good hold of it. And if it's proper thrashing about and trying to bite you, just grab it by the whiskers underneath the chin and hold it in a fairly restrained way, like Rachel's just showing now. If you get them under the chin there, you've got quite a lot of movement of the dog. If you've got a firm grip, they can't really bite you. They can't really do anything. And with most puppies, if you just hold them for about 30 seconds or like that, when they're thrashing around, they'll all of a sudden just give in and go, oh, well, it's not really hurting me. I'm not really achieving anything by this. It's okay. You will get some puppies that after 20 minutes might still be trying to fight you, but most most of them don't. It's the case of just being tolerant and patient and not giving up and not giving in. It's a case of stubbornness of wills. You have to just hang on and wait till they calm down. If you put that puppy down on the floor, they've won. Because they just know every time they do that on the table or every time you go to do that, that's what they're going to do. Yeah. And basically what you're doing is rewarding negative behaviour and wires are behavioural. So you, it's a bit like, you know, if you've got one crying in the middle of the night and you get up to it, you're going to be getting up to it every night, you know. So um, it's, you don't want to be doing that. You've got to just be patient. Let them have their tantrum, you know, let it happen. As long as they're safe and you're safe, let them have the tantrum. They'll get tired before you do. Pull up a chair, hang on to them and let them have it. Once they're a bit worn out, you haven't literally got to do anything with them at that point, but you can put hands on them, you can touch their feet, you can handle their face, you can just check their mouths, especially with babies when they're teething. You, do you know something? There's lots you can do without actually having to put a comb through them. And then when they've been good, you can reward them for that and you can put them down on the floor. And then the next day, pick them up and try again. And you will find the more you do that, the more they'll realise it's not a huge issue that's going on. And then you can start combing and doing things. Patience is the key. Now, I'm going to talk about this as well. Boys, especially when, <laughs> yes, you need your tail. Boys, especially when they're in tire, can sometimes get what Dave and I call a little bit unnecessary in life. And they normally end up with really funny matty bits right at the top of their legs. And I don't want to be rude and discuss what it is, but I think you all know what it could be. So, um, obviously, um, it does map there. And just be aware that it does because the boys do get a little bit unnecessary on themselves. He, he has been used at stud. So and we've had a couple of girls in season. So he thinks like he is the man at the minute. So again, I'm just going to tease those mats out. You just do it with your hand out of the way a little bit. Sorry. So you can see a bit better. I know it's really difficult, but... He's too interested. So literally, <laughs> <laughs> he's such a goofy boy. <laughs> he's not that old. To be he's less than two years old, so he's always still a bit puppyish. He hasn't got any food for you. He, yeah, no, he, you don't need to be the star on the show. Come in, steady, 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 Good. steady. Come on. Oh, no, not me. No, no. Blowing on them is also a good distraction. Um, you know, if you just, it takes their mind off, especially with babies. Steady, steady. Just 
stands still. So, just tease the mats out under here. Obviously, everybody, you should be washing your hands regularly anyway in the current climb, but when you've been doing this, you really want to be washing your hands afterwards before you cook the dinner and go in the house and do. So we're not ripping coat out, we're literally, I mean, he's going to have a little bit to come out because he's not been done for a few weeks. Stop, 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 stop. Good boy. Good boy, stand. Mm -hmm. So that's literally just how you do a back leg and a front leg. Just trying to move around the room because I'm charging the phone from the laptop at the moment. It's a bit difficult carrying a laptop around the room and a phone when I've got a dog trying to interfere with what I'm doing. <laughs> okay. Brush out a face, front legs, back legs. I haven't done another back leg ever, I better do it. Good boy. Get around the corner a bit more. Just, uh, yeah, it's alright. Just comb out this last leg. But I wanted to use him for legs because mm. A, they need you doing. And B, <laughs> you he's can't keep following long, me so around the room. He is a little bit of a foot. <laughs> he is a bit of a fidget bun. But, you know, we're not particularly going to tell him off for doing it because he's not doing anything wrong no. by being interested. He's allowed to move. He hasn't got to stand there like a yeah, statue. Yeah, and that's important. Uh, you know, they're going to fidget. That's all right. They haven't got to stand like statues. But they need to learn that they need to be Someone's four-year-old son would like to know the boy's name. This is Clint. This is Clint, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do you want to say hello, Clint? Hello, Clint. <laughs> <laughs> so literally the same process as the front legs is used on the back legs and again underneath and he's got a mat under there because I can feel it <laughs> It's actually got quite a big one, so that's a good one to show. So we can see that there. So that one, because of the size of it, I'm just going to tease that apart. Looks like you've been crocheting in that, kid. <laughs> What's his pedigree name? Oh, now you're oh. asking. B something or other. <laughs> he is... Bees call runnings at Alkinra. He's a boy that um, I co-bred with my good friend B. Deusman in Germany. And he's out of a homebred girl. That's one of my girls. Um, by a dog um, that's actually in Belgium. But I'd say this, this dog's temperament that you can see on the table, it's this is pretty, pretty typical of one of our wires, really. You know, we... They are terriers and they can be headstrong, but they, you know, they are really amenable. So that's his legs brushed and combed out. Stand back so everyone can see the whole of your clint. So, you know, are they trimmed? No. But are they clean and tidy? Yes. And if that's the most you can get done with your dog, that's good. Because that will help. Do you want to just show them on this? A lot of the people asking about colour right. and getting undercoat. Yeah, just right, rake right. him out because I think, um, I think you've already raked Pinky out, haven't you? Yeah, well, the pink, yeah. So this dog, um, I would, if I wanted to deal with undercoat, maintaining colours and stuff, I'd first of all just put a comb through his coat. Really basic. And you can see there again, Rachel's was using them. Well, hopefully, you just can see the, the wide side. side of the comb. Now, it's not so much of an issue if you get lots of coat coming out when you're combing the body coat. You don't want lots of coat coming out in your comb when you're doing legs and faces because you want leg hair. Even if it's a pet, you want them looking nice, don't you? So, um, 
but on a body coat, all this is doing is picking up loose hairs and any loose undercoat. And another thing is as well, we need to be mindful, if you're pulling through the coat and you hit a snag and you're pulling, you're pulling the snag, you're pulling the skin, it's going to be painful. Always, if you can, just put your hand above, or if you can hold a bit of skin gently, or put your hand above and pull it taut and then just comb. So it reduces the movement of the skin and it's less painful. You know, it shouldn't be um, a distressing process for them. So I would just come out and even just doing that look, it doesn't seem much, but that's quite a lot just for putting a comb through a dog that was in a shower coat a few weeks ago. So, raking out. What do I do in the trimming knife? Put it on there by the laptop. Right, trimming knives. I can't, I have to put this. There are lots of different trimming knives out there. I'm not gonna stand here and say, do not buy such and such a make or such and such a make or such and such a make because it's really not appropriate to do that. But there are some knives that are better to use than others. Um, wide toothed, very commercially produced knives um, often are not what you want to use on a wire coat. When I say commercially, I mean the ones that you find in the general pet shops and just, you know, on the side in Sainsbury's if you were lucky or the giveaway in Aldi or Lidl's. Um, they're great for people who just have really no idea what they're doing but not really got a wire coat that they're trying to maintain and keep nice because they're too sharp. And they're also generally uncomfortable for you to use as a groomer or as an owner. Um, people get, depending on who your mentor or tutor was when you were taught to trim, depends very much on how you will use your knife. Um, a lot of people think you get a knife and you get some coat and you just pull it all out in the middle of the blade. Um, I've only ever used the whole of the blade on a knife when I'm raking out a coat. I would never use the whole of the blade at any other time. Really, that, a third towards the tip of the blade is all you should need to use. There is no reason for you to be pulling out huge chunks of coat that take up the whole of the blade of the knife you only need to be using the tip of a knife and this is another point that comes back to um having a pink dog which is normal colored skin and having a a sore dog with inflamed skin yeah. if you use too much of the knife and this is where people sometimes think that hand trimming is cruel if you're ripping out huge chunks of hair it is cruel but you know if you're tweezer in your eyebrows and you're taking out one or two hairs at a time it's not the same as trying to take the whole eyebrow off in one go no. <laughs> but for raking i would use the whole of the yeah. knife because um, i'm not pulling coat out the purpose of raking or sometimes called carding I've heard it called as well by many people, is literally to help remove dead hairs and a bit the same as combing through, but getting down and getting more of the undercoat out and getting more of the dead coat out. And you can do it without using chalk or you can use it with using chalk. The thing about using chalk is it makes the hair more abrasive so it catches easier within the combing action of the knife. You are not cutting the coat you are pulling out, okay? You don't want your knife at 90 degrees. You want it at about 45 degrees or lying close. <laughs> you don't need to get involved. Okay, so this is wrong. You don't want to be doing that. What you want to be doing is that, that action, okay? You know, it's quite hard to show this on a video and it is much easier in person, but hopefully you can appreciate, you know, that Rachel has got the... So it's the knife, 45 about 45 degree degrees angle. And holding a bit of tautness to the skin so it's not pulling. And just working a small area. And it's literally combing through. For the okay. people that come to us so with pets. That's, that's 
that's literally just only doing that little bit. That's all that's come out of there. And I will say, I think raking is as important as actual trimming for some dogs, especially if they've got a lot of grey in the coat or um, a lot of undercoat because all that, that you take out is generating new wire coat, okay? And you want to do it not just, I'm using this patch as an example. Generally, I wouldn't start here. Generally, I would start at the back of the neck. Same principle. He's got a little bit of undercoat in there and you can see the gray coming out. And even on pet dogs, this is really valuable thing to do. If you can't even trim your dog, but you can comb, brush and rake it out before you can next see a groomer, this will make such a difference. Because you're removing dead coat, uh, loose hairs and undercoat and you're still generating new growth. Okay. And that's literally just from raking that little area. And it doesn't seem like much, but that can make all the difference. So just a comment there on the Mickey red and blue handled knives. Um, you know, you can use those knives, uh, but personally, Rachel and I don't use them. We have, we've tried them in the past, so we've got a little bit of experience with them, but they're really too sharp for what we want for these guys. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, they're not what I would use. If you find they're comfortable for you to use and you're happy with them, I suggest you take them outside and find a big piece of wood and scrape them up and down it like a chisel until you take all the sharp edges off the And knife. just show them the teeth again on the knife. Just put that... To, if you look at these teeth, can you appreciate how the teeth go right up to the tip here? With the uh, Mickey knives, they don't go oh, right up to the tip. You, 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 the, the teeth start about halfway down the knife, and, and it's, it does really promote a, a, a less than ideal technique. And it's all more uncomfortable for you as well as for the dog. Uh, you know, other people will tell you different things, and there are many ways to get a hand trimmed wire in good condition, and this is just our take on it and our opinion so if other people are telling you different it doesn't mean it's wrong but this is just the way we do it it works this, for us this is literally just about coat management you know for the general wire fox terrier that's out there and although these are the wire knives and you know obviously we we are um, representatives for the wire fox terrier association uh, you know these knives aren't something we've just come across by accident we very specifically asked for what we wanted from the person that has made them we've had adjustments made to the knives to try to make it to something that all of us on committee are really happy with as a knife um, so there has quite a lot of thought has gone into these knives i mean years ago i mean no well i was gonna say piercing knives are like gold dust but a lot of people who aren't experienced in trimming may struggle with piercing knives but you can't get them anymore um, we, we are quite lucky we have still got our Pearsons and know, if we're trimming show dogs our Pearsons are our mainstay yeah. but there's no point us telling you too much about them because they're not available no, anymore no. if you can get some second hand ones that's great lucky you but people really don't like to sell them and if you've got any sense you'll stick them on eBay yeah. because you'll get a fortune for them and that's another point about trimming knives a new knife is not necessarily the best knife an old knife, a second-hand knife, a well-used knife is worth its weight in gold. Because the duller they are, the better. You don't want a sharp knife. Um, you want a dull knife. And that's why I say, if you've got, even if you have a wire association knife, if I had a new one to start, I would take it outside and still run it up and down a piece of wood till it was dull. Uh, so for the question how long to rake them, it's not really that there's a no, time just until, until you're not getting no, much coat? Not, yeah, exactly. It's not about um, length of time, it's about till there's no more undercoat and fluff coming out. Uh, somebody's asked about what do we think of the two-sided broad rake. I'm not sure what, what that is, so I don't really have a comment. I don't know if Rachel knows what, a, what no, that is. No, probably... Do you mean like a knife with two sides, a, broad, a wide tilt side and a narrow side? 
Is that what they're made? Let me go back to find out who it was. And don't forget the tail. Don't uh, yeah, so with the knives, if, you, if you're interested in those, like Linda's already said, she's posting and she's coming up as the Wire Fox Terrier Association and we will put a, try to put a bit of a document together to point people into the right direction. But for the things that are sold from the Wire Fox Terrier Association, such as the knives and the chalk, um, if you go on the Wire Fox Terrier Association website, you can find out where to get... Um, those things from and, and Jax runs our shop so if, if there's anything we haven't covered that you're not sure and you're not sure what grooming equipment to get Jax is re like really super at, at pointing people in the right direction and depending on you know what your budget is how much you want to buy how much you want to invest into it um, she can give you a recommendation for you know which knives the best which you know uh, which wideness of teeth is going to suit your needs best uh, and you know these knives are really good not just for wire fox terriers they're good for like jack russells and dachshunds and things but what we might suggest for one breed might be slightly different and jack's is really good with things like that yeah. so from a dog that was groomed for cross and hasn't had a trim since i've still had quite a lot of bits and bobs out of him just from raking and i could probably expect to get that out of him every week um, and if you can't do anything else with your dog but what we've shown you, as in the spray, pin brush, check them over, comb them out, give them a rake, you're already probably a good 60% of the way there to looking after your dog. And it's probably hard for you to appreciate on the video, but since Rachel's raked out that undercoat, this dog's coat's lying flatter already. Um, if you can keep getting the undercoat out, you will keep a, clat a flatter, cleaner look to your dog. If you don't get that undercoat out, it tends to start to stick out everywhere. And don't forget to reward your dog for nothing good on the table, because you can play. I think that's probably all we're going to do with this boy yeah, now because he has been on the table for quite a while. Um, yeah, I need to go and get her ladyship in. Um, so we're going to bring in a girl now who... Now, the girl that I'm bringing in now, um, she hasn't been prepped in the fact of... She hasn't been bathed and she hasn't been trimmed um, in layers for today. She's been in what I call a kennel trim. So basically she just gets topped off about every eight weeks or so. So, but she's a good one to show. What I've done is I've trimmed half of her. So I've trimmed one side of her, um, and I'm gonna trim the other side of her um, now. Um, but it's good because you can see where her head comes down close and her shoulders are pink, um, and that she's got a blown coat, um, but she's got a layer underneath. You've been a good boy. And we have quite purposefully picked something that's not in a show trim to give people a more realistic expectation of what a dog can come down like. Um, a lot of the time when people do grooming demonstrations, they'll get something and they've specifically worked the coat for that process. And that's all well and good and it's nice and the dogs look great. But that's not really that helpful for when people at home are trying to groom because it gives you a completely false expectation of what you're actually likely to achieve. Whereas as this girl is going to be much more achievable type of trim you can get on something that hasn't had their coat regularly worked. So, uh, I'm not sure what's the question about the Ferminator. Put it in the bin. <laughs> So this girl, she hasn't had a huge amount of table time. She's uh, very young. She's a young girl. She's uh, what, just gone 12 months yeah. old, has she? Yeah. Um, you know, so she's again another good one just to sort of go she's through handling. Been, yeah, she's not been shown yet. She's um, a real novice girl on the table. Like I say, she's only maintained in a kennel trim. So um, she's had... So if very, I come round here... She's had very little <laughs> done with that. So this side of her. I'm just gonna. Put... Yes, do you want to stand back a bit? You've got all the boobs in there. <laughs> well, they're getting everywhere. What can I say? Yeah. If I just put a comb quickly through here, and the reason I've done her is because you guys might well have dogs at home that have got hair this long. Because I've had quite a few people calling me that have got dogs. 
with blown coats or very heavy coats. Uh, and you, I'm sure you guys can appreciate here. So this has been trimmed earlier today for this video. Yes, it's pink and it's down to skin, but that is in no way inflamed. It's just pink. Colour it's just skin. skin. Uh, it's not inflamed, it's not sore, it's just the colour of So you skin. can get it down to the skin without making it red and sore. Okay. And this, so I'm get not... a bit of a picture from... A I'm not saying... I appreciate, really. Yeah. This is not um, a perfect pet strip. This is just a working strip to keep her tidy. Nothing more, nothing less. And at the end of the day, we're just looking at basic introduction to managing your wire's coat. You know, she's not going to go to a show anytime soon, okay? Um, but you can see there's a lot more coat on this side. And all down her shoulders than what is on and the other side. And she's literally had, I've literally just topped half of her off this morning. Just to give a rough idea. And I'm going to try and trim the other half of her now. <laughs> she calms it up. There you go. And she is a bit bouncy and she is a bit energetic. So I'm going to grab this chair because I'm a bit of an old cripple now, everybody. I have to sit to trim mostly. So you're going to go through knife technique now yes. and just pulling coat and what your chalk's for and... <laughs> right, so when you're standing to trim or whether you sit to trim, always make sure the table and you are at a comfortable height. You know, you don't want to be leaning right over or up or down and over to be trimming. Again, it's about ergonomics and personal safety. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a bit late in the day now. I'm a bit long in the yeah. tooth and my back's already stuffed, but that's not from trimming. <laughs> but I have to be mindful of it when I trim. So, as we can see... Oh, so, we're the question, we've had a few questions now come through about ears. Hopefully, we'll get to just yep, ears, to ears at the end um, yep. for those so, that are still around. <laughs> yeah, if I haven't bored you all to death by now. Okay, so... For trimming, I will use chalk, and the main reason for using chalk is um, it gives a bit of bit, a bit of abrasion and grip on the coat for when you're pulling, so it makes it easier to grab it. I mean, this bitch's coat is, you know, she's in a full kennel trim. Her coat's blown, it's, it's ready to angle. be topped. So I can even do this with finger and thumb if I want to. Just hold and support the coat and I can just pull and it's coming off. You know, there used to be quite a few purists that wouldn't use a knife and they would always do it by finger and you thumb. Know. But I don't know anybody that shows a wire fox terrier now so that does it like that. So even that, you know, because her coat's ready to come. So, um, and like I say, she's got a layer underneath. Is it a perfect layer? No, it's a rough layer. But you know what? It'll suit her for now. She doesn't need to have anything more. Um, people get in a frenzy that their dogs have got to be done and they've got to look perfect. They just need to be neat, tidy, healthy and clean. That, that's all that matters, you know. Um, you know, you were not expecting you to be turning out show dogs and, you know, them looking like best in show winners. That's not what it's about. Just clean, tidy and manageable and maintainable. So... She's a good girl. Good job. He's a good girl. So again, knife. Tip of the knife. That's all I'm going to be using. Get your nose out the way. Cheeky. She's a proper cheeky madam. Okay. This so, is pinky. Yeah, the knife pinky. So when you're pulling, that's literally all I'm going to be using is that tip of the knife. I am not going to be using all that. That's when you get sore dogs. And also when you use your knife... You're not digging in. You're not digging in like that. I didn't see what you're doing there. There we Good go. Deal. You're not digging in like that. You need to have it at the same angle as the body. So if I'm doing a shoulder, I'm going to be flat. If I'm on the neck, I'm going to be on the angle. I'm not digging in tip first. Just because I'm using the tip, I'm not digging in. The other thing is, it's better to take a few hairs at a time than to try and be really adventurous and rip it out, okay?
Can I do that? Yes. Am I going to do that? No, because it's not comfortable for the dog and it will just make your hands ache. Hand stripping makes your hands ache and your wrists ache and your shoulders ache and your elbows ache if you don't look after yourself and your technique. So it's all got multiple reasons. You need to grab that wire and just plug it in the side. It's a bit odd because I'm trying to stay oh, attached no. to the charger. I'm struggling to walk around the room. <laughs> So, no digging in with the tip of the knife, keep it level, but just use the tip of your knife for pulling, but level to the angle of the body. Another issue is, you always pull in the direction that the hair grows. Can we turn the, cur the table, sorry, yes. uh, uh, just at Definitely. 90 degrees, and then I'll probably be able to get a better angle from where I am. How's that? Is that better? That's a bit better, yeah. Yeah. So, um, always pull in the direction the coat grows. So if the coat grows down, you're pulling down. If it grows back, you pull back. If it pulls on an angle, you pull on the angle. Never pull against the grain. And what a little point that we said earlier, if you've only got limited time to do something, and I really suggest you don't try stripping when you've only got limited time, but if you've been doing it for a while or you have got a bit of experience and you've been used to pulling coats, always pull evenly in the areas that you do so if you've only got time to do the head neck and front just do the head neck and front don't do a patch here and then do the top of the head and then do a little bit down the front and think oh i've got those little areas done that'll be all right or i'll just do the black patch that's another favorite i'll just do the colored patches now and the head and i'll leave the rest if you pull coat out evenly, it will grow in evenly, okay? It's as simple as that. If you pull it out unevenly, it will grow in in uneven patches. So technique is very important. Knowing how much time you've got to do something is very important. Don't be over ambitious. If all you've got, if you put your dog on the table and you do your basic checks that we showed and all you've got time to do is a quick spray, a quick pin brush and a quick comb, just do that. You know, if you've got time to rake, then rake. I'm not going to rake her now because I raked her this morning. Um, if you've got time to do all that, let them have a rest, go and have a cuppa and then put them back on the table give them a quick comb and then start trimming, then do that. Be mindful how long you've got them on the table for. Very young puppies get bored very easily. Other ones are full of his sheep. And, and older dogs, you know, if they're not being clipped and they are being hand stripped, just remember they are going to get stiff after standing there for a while. Right, missus. I want to show these people. I am going to be naughty and I am just going to start. I am going to do what I normally do because I'm not going to change it because it'll just fry my brain otherwise. Okay, I am going to start trimming at the back of the ears and down the back of the neck. Next, I am going to pull this quite close because it's going to match the other side. I might need my knife actually. Where's your chalk gone? Lost the Behind chalk. Me. Uh, Clint's loose. <laughs> Clint's huh. jumped out the pen. Sorry, folks, if you can hear a few crash band wallops, Clint's jumped out of his play pen that we've got him in just for this morning, and he's now just going through bags of newspaper and dog food. So what I want to do here, this is going to come down close, like the other side has. And we wanted to show people a dog dump coming down a bit close because a lot of the time what happens is people at home, they, they'll have a go at trimming their dog and it comes down close and they really panic. Where's my wire knife? <laughs> what did I do um, with it? I'll put it in the pot, it's up there. It? Yeah. It's on. <laughs> We all get used to our own knives, even when they're exactly the same. <laughs> <laughs> it's what sits. And I've got quite arthritic hands now, so I've got my knife taped mm. up because it meets my hand mm. better. 
So I'm literally... Now, I will say as well, Rachel's pulling this and, and we've done it quite a while, so we are quite fast. Yeah, when oh. you're first starting, <laughs> don't go to try to go at it at this speed because you just won't have the muscle memory and it probably won't end well. Just take it really, really <laughs> steady, really, really slow Sorry. to start with. Sorry, folks, I didn't think about that, to be honest. That's a fair point, Dave. And if you just do it a bit slower, people might okay. get a better appreciation. I know you've already sort of gone through technique, but it's really hard to see on the camera yeah. at that speed. So, literally, um, 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 just the top few tips in my, in my knife, and I'm just pulling the ends and pulling it right down because she hasn't got a layer underneath on her shoulders and down the side. And this is where they're really different to like the likes of Border Terriers and Irish Terriers because if you haven't trimmed one of them for a while, generally they will still have a layer. Uh, and these guys' coats, they are different. Yes, they're both wire coats that can be hand trimmed, but they are different. So that is what's... I'm going to take down her shoulder, but when I get down here to her body coat, when I'm pulling this, we're going to have a layer left underneath. I know what you're doing. So the, the chalk we just use for, it helps with grip. Yeah, it just makes the hair a bit more abrasive um, and it just makes it a bit easier to pull. And you can also, if you have a wire, which it's not uncommon in wires, to have quite a greasy coat, you can also use chalk as a bit of a cleaning agent and you can fill the coat up with chalk and brush it through and it can help clear that grease a little bit. Uh, this isn't a greasy girl at no. all, so it's being used purely for grip of the hair. So if I just do this bit here, I just want to take that. So I'm just going to pull Sorry, I'm going faster than what you want me to. So, if I just take that bit there, we can say... I'll do a bit more into that mark. So the question about trimming show dogs uh, much shorter. Yes. No, uh, yes and no. But it's about it, it, timing of yeah, the Yeah, what we're doing when we show it, there's, there's lots of different things you can do with a wire coat and lots of different events and things people participate in. And, you know, you, you might have a dog that's a pet, you just want to keep it tidy. You might like the Yeti look of our Welsh Terrier we showed you earlier. You might want to enter grooming competitions. You might want to show your dog. All of these things, we will do slightly different things with the coat. But what we're trying to show everybody here is just... Just a basic maintenance trim at home for dogs that would usually go to the groomer that aren't we're not trying to show you show trimming it's really difficult to show show trimming because it's a process you do every week and you know we could quite easily do a 12-week course with a session every week on show trimming um so, so we're really just trying to put this girl in a tidy pet trim to keep her coat in you know good tidy order keep her in good skin health um, and show people how to do that in a way that's not uncomfortable for the dog. So here, you can see I've sort of left her a bit of a quiff there, and that's to show you how long this coat actually was. Yeah. It's a bit hard because it's a bit yeah. of glare on the camera, but... So... Oh, well, it's doing that. <laughs> You're not laughing, <laughs> Missy. So, that's how long the coat actually was and this girl's got really nice um sort of wire coat then her undercoat so when she's being trimmed her wire long wire coat is coming out and she's coming down to a really nice undercoat so layer there we're taking that out so here this here i'm touching now this is her undercoat yep uh, and then this here, this is a, her wire coat, which if we're showing, this is the stuff we want at the surface, the wire coat. Um, but when, when we're doing show trims, we manage the coat to make that time to be where we want it at, at that time for that show. Whereas as with this, we're just trimming to what we've got. So because we haven't worked her coat here, she's got undercoat and here she's got good coat. Now this girl has got really good pigment and her undercoat is very dark. Uh, a lot of dogs, when they're trimmed, their undercoat won't be this dark. Their wire coat will be this dark, but their undercoat will be really grey and faded, um, which is why sometimes when your dogs go to the groomers, they can go through cycles of coming back different colours. And also, I think it's worth people knowing, when you've got co wire, white coats, people get 
some of the experienced people out there are probably going to laugh at me now. Um, but I don't care what anybody says, white coat is different to porter coloured coat. It feels different. Um, it's just got a slightly different texture to it. Um, to people who aren't used to it, you won't notice it. But it does trim slightly differently. You'll find it eat all um, just come out a little bit differently. It feels a little bit differently the more you do it. Um, so. uh, and another good nice thing you can just see on this bitch. Let me just pull a few yeah. of them hairs out. So colours. can you see on here, look, look how uh, the tip of the hair where my thumb is is black and the bottom of the hair is white and that's the same strands of hair. As the hair dies, this is how you lose your colour. And so if we clip this coat now, we would clip off all that long black stuff where the coat was nice and alive and all we'd have left is this white stuff and that's why your coat fades. Now we've pulled that, when it grows back in, it'll start to come in black again at the roots and it won't come in white again at the roots. That white is because that is dead coat. And that's why it's not painful to pull this out and that's how it's different from our own hair. Um, that coat is dead coat. It, it's not really rooted into the skin anymore. It's just dead coat that's ready to fall out. So I am going to quickly just... And when I'm doing this, I'm not pushing down on her back or digging into her skin, but I'm keeping a little bit of tension on the skin so it's not pulling her. Because otherwise, when you pull, you can see that movement in her skin and you don't want that because it makes it uncomfortable for the dogs. And this shouldn't be an uncomfortable process. Yes, they have got sensitive areas around their ears, normally around their elbows and around their private areas and down at the front. But it still shouldn't be painful and uncomfortable. Is that the right side? I think the dogs are playing outside. and It sounds like they've got a rope or something banging <laughs> against the wall. Um, so this girl now, she's being really good when Rachel's trimming her and she's standing. But, and Rachel's pulling the, the skin taut. What you can do if you've got something which keeps trying to sit is you can put your hand underneath yep. the dog. Under like this. Yeah, and grab the coat from the other uh, side. Hello, everybody. See Rachel's hand. And then you can pull the, the skin down on that side and that'll have the same effect of getting it taut. I mean, she's been really great, so she doesn't need to. And I suggest you don't do it from under the belly in front of the legs. Put your hand between the back legs and up and over because they will rest some of their weight on your arm. And yes, that means you are weight bearing for them. But if that makes it more comfortable for them, that's fine by me. Can we try and do a, a, an up close slow again? Somebody's just asking. Well, it might be uh, better to do it on the black patch because there's better colour contrast. Okay. It's the camera's right, glaring so a bit on Just the tip that. of the knife. Slow, slow, slow. Tip of the knife and pull. That's and you've it. only got to take a few hairs at a time. This is not a race. You are not using the whole of the knife. We are not doing that. See the difference? Tugging on her to get all that out. It's Do you want to just, just show people how many hairs you've actually got? Because it's really easy to see with the black hairs. That is all you're taking out in one go. And that's why it takes a long time. And that's why your groomers charge so much for hand stripping. This is a skilled job. And it takes years to be able to do it at the level and the speed that your groomers can do it with a consideration for your dogs. What's that? Uh, are you pulling with the? Are you pulling with the tool touching the skin, or no. just at the end? Can you just, show one time slowly? I think that we yeah, covered that. Yeah, yeah, and just grab the end of the hair. You're not cutting the hair. You're not cutting through. Her coat's so blown, it's falling out. I mean, I literally, I could do this with my... Look, if you've got a dog with a coat this length, you can even put a bit of chalk on your fingers and just pull it. She shouldn't even feel what you're doing. And I'm not... You, know, you my guys might be able to appreciate now, looking at her, she's starting to get a little bit more tired now and she's not so busy, busy on the table. Um, this is quite a nice time to trim them because they stand still, but you don't want to let them get so tired that they're falling asleep yeah, on the table on you. Um, so, so if they get like that, do give them a break. I mean, I mean, you know, she has been out for a run this morning, so she's run a lot of energy off and... 
but I am going to just, um, does anybody want me to go slowly again? Because otherwise I'm just going to um, do this at Rachel's speed so I can get to some of the other areas. Yeah, so you're not you're not pulling it at the skin. Yeah. You, 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 there's not really a particular place on the hair shaft you have to grab it. A lot of just, people will say about halfway down the hair, but it, it's not an exact just, science. You can just even the tips, just on the tips. When it's this blown, just on the tips. Good girl. Uh, so with dogs sitting and lying down for grooming, no, I don't think it's wrong. Um, you know, it's fine. There's a lot you can do trimming when they're sitting. Uh, it, it's it's easier to trim them if they'll stand. It's much easier to get both of your sides even if they'll stand. But if they won't stand and they're adamant they want to sit, it's fine to pull the hair out like that. Uh, you I've know, it doesn't a, matter. I've got a Welsh dog that I show that came from a good friend of mine and... Um, he is like a rag doll on the table. Getting him to stand to be trimmed is a bit of a nightmare. And uh, I think I had to be re-educated by him that he wasn't going to stand to be trimmed. So, um, uh, but it doesn't mean to say he can't be done. He's just flat out on his side while I'm pulling. Um, there's certain areas he does need to stand for, obviously. Uh, another um, sort of, well, not necessarily a mistake, but another thing people will do that you can see Rachel's demonstrated quite nice that she's not doing is they'll trim a bit of hair in one area and then they'll bounce to another area and another area. Yeah, this. It, yeah. So this is what we mean, like pulling a bit here, pulling a bit there, pulling a bit here, pulling a bit here. Or oh, I'll take those few hairs there. Oh, I'll take those few hairs there. I'll, don't do it when you've got a bit more experience if you can if you if you from the beginning when you first start you start working an area and you get used to working an area your finish when you get a bit more experience will be much better than if you bounce around and trim everywhere well it doesn't you need to promote evenness as well in your grooming and if you're bouncing about it's not going to be even and it doesn't matter if it's a pet Oh, it's a show dog. The principles, the core techniques and principles are the same. And it's a bit like going to school and learning your ABCs. If you learn them correctly to start with, you'll always know them correctly. If you don't learn it correctly to start with, you're always going to struggle with your literacy. So the real skill that takes people a long time to get with wire fox terriers is not really about pulling out the coat. And everybody thinks it's about the pulling of the coat. It's not. It's about understanding the coat if you're showing something so that you have that coat, the length you want it, in the places that you want it, at the time that you want it. Um, uh, and that's the bit that really takes a lot of time to get the experience with. And every dog's coat grows a little bit different, a little bit faster, a bit slower, a bit flatter, a bit more crinkled. They're all a bit different. So just while I'm working down here, I'll just talk about roughly about the lines we talk, uh, trim to as well, because people are going to go, well, you know, how long do you have it everywhere? The flat work generally is the closest work. So it's normally really close to the skin. Um, body coat, we leave a bit more length on. Um, so generally from behind the ears, if you put your hands just down the neck to the shoulders, all that area down here, will become down quite close. She's going to be quite pink down there. <laughs> Puppies playing yeah. outside. These, obviously, we've left a bit more of a layer. It's a body coat. It's not going to come down like that. Could I take it down that close? Yes, I could. And um, If I was going to start trimming her to actually take her to a show in another three months' time, then to be honest, I would. I'd take it all down really close to that. But that's not what I'm doing. I'm just keeping her in a manageable kennel trim. And from a point of view that. of trimming them to skin and evenness, trimming them to skin is really nice to get an even coat as long as you evenly trim it to skin and you don't have a bold patch and then a tuft. Yeah. Um, you know, you if it's evenly down to the skin, it'll, it'll grow in a lovely even layer. Yeah. So, I'm just going to pull in these bits. Just to make 
We had a, a question earlier about um, being right-handed and the, the other side of the dog being harder to trim. Yeah. Um, so have you got any <laughs> tips for that? It's Again, it's handling tips really, isn't it? Um, in what way? Um, just how you have to hold your knife or hold the dog or... Um, it's practice. It, it, it's like everything. Um, uh, I always find when I'm trimming the other side of the dogs, they try to sit more than when I'm trimming this side. Uh, and that's obviously a reflection on what I'm doing with the dog because they're, they're doing something different. But that's when I find it really useful to put your hand between their back legs and grab the skin from the opposite side. I find that a, like... A lot of these handling things nobody's ever really taught me to do, but then when I started doing that, it like it changed my grooming forever. <laughs> it like made such a difference. It made it so much easier to get get it even and get it done. I think you just need to be aware as well when you're holding them or what positions you're in that you're not holding them too tightly, or that you like if you I could quite easily put my hand round her tail to support her skin mm. here, but if I did that, it'd be quite easy to put weight down on her. Um, and I don't want to do that. It's about me trying to support her in her experience as much as me um, um, holding on to her. So, um, you know, this should be a comfortable process. I'm trying to, as much as I can, answer the questions as we're going along, but with trying to keep an eye on, like, filming the dog and things, there are some things I'm missing, so I am hoping that Linda's picking up on things um, that I'm missing. So hopefully none of you are feeling that we're, we're ignoring you. It's not deliberate if it seems like that. There's just such a lot we can cover, and we're trying to keep it as basic as possible today so that people can just get the bare essentials to look after the dog during this time. And we're just hoping it's going to be helpful for you. Like we said at the start, if people have got things they want um, doing maybe in the future, we can look at doing things. We'll do a bit of a survey. I think we're going to, I think we're going to put a bit of a uh, monkey survey together and um, get people to fill it in. Um, because this is the first time from the Wire Association we've done any live streaming tutorials um, and we're quite happy to organise other things but we need to see what people want and our membership is worldwide and we've got different people that would have different interests and different things at different places so if we can accommodate our members and friends we're quite happy to do that. Um, Obviously, if you want more one-to-one -one grooming support, we have got our grooming seminars as well, and people are more than welcome to book onto that. Um, that their details will be on the um, Wire Association webpage. So right here, we're coming over to where body coat meets back leg hair. So um, what I would say is, if, if you put your hand on the side of your dog, here, you can actually feel where the muscle I'll go behind changes. You might actually yeah. get a bit to see a little yeah. bit. That... If you just put your hand on the side of your dog, <laughs> you can sort of feel the changes in the muscle definition and where the butt starts. He's got a cute little <laughs> butt for a young girl. So really what we do is we would trim to the edge of that, which is really to the end of where her loin would be. Because part about grooming as well is understanding the different parts of your dog. So, yeah, so you're saying loin for the people that don't understand yes. what you mean by the loin. Do you want to just explain yes. where you're talking so about? Basically, on a dog, you've got a dog's <laughs> withers here, basically, and you've got her top line, which is her back, and she has her ribs, and where her ribs end is her loin before where her hips start, in very simple layman's terms. So that is her loin there, between the end of her ribs and where her hips start. She's actually got lovely rib in this bitch. Um, that's a different issue, shut up Rachel. <laughs> so anyway, um, so from there, you'd want to bring this body coat back around over this round that she's got over her butt basically. Okay, so that's what we'll do. And then you would follow that line down the back of her legs. So just clean a bit of this off. So where that curve is, down to her hock, which is the reflection of the front of her stifle. This is a stifle where her knee joint is, which is right here, right there. So this curve, we would just trim this straight over and down the back of here. 
We will take a little more off here, but we'll just blend that in. So I'd say for that in. area, Rachel's talking about blending. If you've never uh, had a go at trimming a wire before, this is and you're a good trimming, place to start. It, well, oh, it, okay. I would hand trim yes. those probably with finger yes. and thumb rather yes. than using a knife because yes. if you use a knife and you haven't had much experience you can get a very blunt line well even if you use a knife and you've got lots of experience you can still get a very <laughs> blunt line it's much easier to blend with finger and thumb so like Rachel showed just put a bit of chalk on your fingers and just tease the hairs yeah. out you haven't got to use the knife I'll do that in a minute and just bloody black in a white that's the uh... Yeah, for you guys, it's not going to hurt if you've got a few black hairs in your white. But aesthetically, for me as a reader exhibitor, it just doesn't sit on the eye very well. <laughs> so I'm just going to take a bit more. So as you can see, I mean, is that a completely even, tidy layer? No, but it's reasonably even. It's reasonably tidy. And considering what she started off with there, mm -hmm. she'll feel better and fresher for it. It'll start new generation of growth and it will just keep her tidy, you know? And that's all what we're aiming for today. Now, I'm just gonna pull her tail down because I just wanna get in front of the tail. And literally, I'm not, I've just got my hand underneath her lightly and I've just got her tail just hooked under my thumb. So she's not wagging it in my face. And it also just gives me a little bit of support for her rear end. And you'll find quite a lot here when you're doing this, you know, e even when you try it not to, you will put a little bit of weight through them. So naturally, a lot of them will just try to sit down. Good girl. I know, it's your bum. I'd say the sort of the, the bit on the top just in front of the tail, if they're sitting down, is fine. If personally I'm trimming down the side of the leg, I really try to make them stand because that's when you can start trimming a lot further down the leg. If they're sat and you just keep trimming where you think it'll be when they're stood, sometimes you'll take a lot off and they can end up with no leg hair left. Yeah. Which it doesn't really matter if they end up with no leg hair left, but you won't quite get the wire fox terrier shape that uh, we would usually try to aim for. If you don't like any leg hair, you don't have to have it. You can pull all that out as well. Oh, I think that's a good point to make as well. Uh, you know, there's no right and wrong in black and white, really, of a wire has to specifically look like this tiny detail given by somebody. Um, it's how you want your dog to look. The breed standard gives a, a general idea of how long coat should be in general places like on the back and on the flat work and things like that. Um, you know, um, you know, I think it's about an inch and a half a coat um, in the heaviest areas. Um, and that's fine. But if you don't want your dog who lives with you, who you love, having that length of coat, they don't have to have it. If you go hill walking every weekend and it's a nightmare keeping their long furnishings tidy and you'd rather have their furnishings off, their leg hair off, then have their leg hair off. You know, it's what suits you. But it's about just having the technique and the basics to be able to facilitate that. I know I'm going to do this <laughs> bit. To facilitate that and help you on your way. I know. <laughs> Come on. You're going to have to hold your tail in a minute because you're wiggling. And this is a sensitive area for them. There's no two ways about it. I said, I thought you'd done my bum <laughs> earlier today. What are you doing messing with my bum? Don't be afraid to support holding their tails as long as they've got their feet on the floor. Because it'll, that holding her tails is not going to hurt her, okay? She's got her feet on the floor. But if she lifts her feet up, <laughs> that's her <laughs> push against me while I'm trimming you know really 
So at the beginning, Rachel showed you um, some thinning scissors and some scissors. Now, if you've got a dog and you're not interested in showing it and you don't mind if they lose a bit of colour and the texture, but you know, you, you'd still like to try to keep them looking like a wire fox terrier with wire body coat, um, sort of up the bum is one area you might want to use your thinning scissors. Yeah. Um, so Rachel's not going to use the thinning scissors on this girl because she does want to show her. At some point. <laughs> It's much easier to blend this area if you've got a coat you've been trimming every week, like on a show dog. No. But because she hasn't, she hasn't really got much difference in the length of no. the layers. No. Well, she hasn't got any layers, really. I haven't really trimmed her back legs. I did comb them out this morning, believe it or not. So basically, the shape you want, because you need to know what shape you're aiming for if you're trimming the, over the hips. So basically... A really rough layman's guide from the outside of the hip down to the outside of the foot. Anything that sticks out, take it off. Okay? I said, oh, that sounds really easy. That's really good, that is. <laughs> yeah. Just do it a few hairs at a time. If you try and do this, you're going to end up with huge holes everywhere. You will probably find that this coat here hasn't been worked regularly. I would not trim the whole of this leg when I'm just blending this little bit in here. I would just blend a little bit of this in and do this leg when I do the other legs. But I just wanted to give you an idea of the shape you're aiming for so that when you're doing a bit of blending up here, you know what you're going to be aiming for lower down. So I'm literally... Steady, steady. Fed up now, aren't you? She's all had enough of this. <laughs> so I'm literally going to pull this out by hand. Get a bit so, of a better view. It's really hard because yeah, I'm going to well, lose charge if I unplug it for too long. <laughs> Hello, Belinda. I hope Ola Bug's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Belinda. Can I have some eggs next week, please? <laughs> <laughs> and wire fox terriers are particularly hard to trim as a breed because i don't know how much you can appreciate here but how the black grows into the tan and grows into the white getting areas even when colours change is really difficult and if you don't get it even over there it can be really really difficult so those guys of you with welsh terriers out there that are watching this you guys have a much easier job of trimming because if you don't get it quite as even it won't be quite as telling yeah it's really hard with wire fox terriers when you've got the black growing into the tan and into the white to get it all really even and that it's quite an unforgiving colour yeah, and all the principles we're talking about for wires really apply for Welsh and for Lakelands. Steady, steady, steady. Except Welsh are a bit more stubborn on the table. Welsh are more, uh, yeah, Wilful. usually a bit more stubborn to trim on the table, but their coat's usually a bit easier to trim to make them look smart because you don't have to get them quite as even. You Tina Bailey says, Daisy says hi to Rachel. Hi, Daisy. <laughs> Hope she's been a good girl. Right, let's just take that bit off your tail while you're already fed up with me around mm. here. So when you're chewing the tail, just put your, I know it's, it's up close and personal, put the flat of your hand against the dog's butt, put the tail over your hand and you can grip it lightly by the side and you're supporting the dog and you've got a firm grip of the tail. And again, you should only be taking a few hairs at a time. 
but this is a personal area and as you come down the towel you should move your hand to support the towel as you mm. come down the towel good girl if you want to sit that's fine so i'm just pulling these long hairs out I've just uh, had a thought, so for those guys of you that saw our Welsh girl at the start, which got a blown coat, um, and we were sort of trying to show the coconut matting, um, this girl has also got a blown coat, but it hasn't been left quite as long. So even though it's blown, it didn't get to the stage of matting. If she would have been okay. left another month, her yeah. coat probably would have started to get that uh, classic coconut matting. Uh, and I think at one time it did used to actually say in the Wire Fox Dairy of Breed stands at the Kennel Club about coconut matting. And yeah. I think it was taken out because people didn't yeah. understand what that was. Yeah. But it is actually, a, if you've got a really good wire coat and you leave them for about that. six months and you don't keep them brushed to keep the mats apart, you will get coconut matting. Yeah. This girl would get coconut matting. She just hasn't been left quite as long as the Welsh girl. And even, uh, and coconut matting and the matting is not just about when it's blowing. <laughs> But when they're in full coat, in a good wire coat, like she's just down to her underwear, but you should be able to separate the hair and not see the skin. That coconut matting that was close to the skin was about protecting them from the elements, as well as encouraging the coat to be able to mat away from the skin. So you're able to pull it apart and get the pits out. So I'm just going to finish pulling these bits off her tail. And like I say, if you've got your guys at home, um, the pets that you're trying to maintain, um, you know, by all means, use thinning scissors just to tidy around the sanitary areas. Just be really careful. And you can even use them up the back of the tails. Good girl, I know I'm doing your tail. And for those that, you know, have joined us uh, later through, uh, if you've had a dog and it's been previously clipped and it's in a fairly short clip still and its coat hasn't been left to blow, please don't start trying to hand trim your dogs like this um, because it will be uncomfortable for the dogs. If you have something that's clipped and you decide you want to have it hand trimmed, please let it grow out for about six months so they're like a big woolly bear and then try to hand trim it. Don't start trying to hand trim something that's been clipped yeah, especially, and if you've got something that's been clipped once, that's fine. If they've been clipped for the last five years of their life, don't start hand trimming them now. Good girl. There's a good girl. Nearly done your tail. I know, this is sexy. And just sort of touching on the difference between hand trimming and clipping. I would say, uh, although I, have, I don't really have any evidence to support this, I would say anecdotally, a dog which is hand trimmed correctly, a wire fox terrier hand trimmed correctly, and a Welsh terrier and a Lakeland, probably do maintain better skin health as long as you're not trimming it in a rough way, taking too much at a time, using a bad technique and making the skin red and raw. If you're doing it, you know, gentle, like Rachel's been showing today, I think they do keep a bit better skin health. Um, I, I do think when they're clipped, they do subjectively seem to have a, a, a be a bit more prone to bad skin. But like I said, I don't have any evidence particularly to support that. Uh, but by hand trimming, we are keeping the coat in the way they've been bred for hundreds of years to be maintained. And the other thing is with clipping, um, you don't know what blades they're using. Um, sometimes they can be clipped a bit too close. Um, sometimes it can, I think it can sometimes promote extra So we've got a question here. How do you know if their coats are ready to be pulled versus carded? Well, you can do both. Well, if they're about this long and they're starting to mat, I wouldn't card. If they're already matting away from the skin, just tease the mat, pull it out. And you can do that by hand. I'll grab um, Sky again afterwards if they want and to have another look. Um, but if, if you can have this much coat on them and still card them. Yeah, you, you could you really, you could card any coat, yes. even if they're really matted. Yes. But it's there's kind no of, point. yeah, there's no point and it's much easier and quicker when they, they're, 
they've matted all up just if, to take if it out. It's matted up, it's better to take it all out and then card what's yeah. left, not card before. But this is why we've tried today to put a few different dogs on the table to show you because all of you at home will all have your, your Fox Terriers and your Welsh Terriers or Lakeland Terriers, whatever breeds you, you, know, you guys have got at home. Um, they will all be at different stages of their coat and, and with hand trimming, although the principles don't change, what you how you might approach a dog with a six-month coat is very different to how you'd approach something that was trimmed six weeks ago. Uh, so for the question with carded, I don't know if you were around earlier in the video, but that's um, Rachel was showing you raking through the coat with a knife at a yes. 45 degree angle. So you'll hear people call it carding, call it raking. Um, so it's just pulling the knife through the coat at about a 45 degree angle. You know, Rachel can probably show you that again in a minute, but while she's working that area, just... I won't stop her. <laughs> Yeah, just totally I mean, she it. hasn't really got much left to card now no. because she's already been done. But Rachel can sort of show you the process, yeah, what she so means again. Yeah, so it's the only time I would use the full length of the knife. You don't want it at 90 degrees. You want it at 45 degrees. You want it in the direction the coat grows. And you want it in line with the body of the dog. So you're not digging it in in any way. And you would just gently give some tension to the skin, either holding it in your fingers, not pinching, or pushing it back and just holding it there and just pulling it through like you were combing. And you're not ramming it into the skin because, again, no, if you ram this into the skin, you'll make it red and inflamed. Just <laughs> combing over the coat. Okay. There you go. And that's over the area I've just done, yeah. so... Uh, you know, you can keep raking or carding, whatever you want to call it, again and again and again, and you'll, you'll always get a little bit... Um, you know, you'll never get to a point where none comes out unless you've got a dog total pink sausage all over. Uh, but you will get a noticeable difference if you do it at home yourselves. All of a sudden, you'll start to get a lot, considerably less. So, so yeah, the stripping knives you can buy from the Wire Fox Terrier Association. Uh, we've said a few times um, that you can... Uh, we'll try and put a list together or you can go on the Wire Fox Terrier Association website and Jacks who runs our shop is super helpful telling people um, what grooming equipment will suit their needs. Yeah, because we, uh, we acknowledge we've got a wide range of experience out there from you guys that might even be long-time breeds of exhibitors or professional handlers that know exactly what you're doing and you're just joining in for the fun of it. To those of you that have got a dog at home and you're just desperate to know what to do while they can't get to the groomer. Um, some of you will have been to our grooming seminars and have already had a little bit of input. So been having a little go yourself at home, but just want some pointers. And, um, you know, Jax is really good. She'll really help you out with, you know, what your needs are. Good girl. So I've just roughly took a little bit off the back of a leg, like I said I would do, just to match the curve at the front. Again, this is not about being show perfect, it's about her being kennel tidy and just maintaining her. Okay, and I'll come back to trim that leg when I'm doing a bit of furnishings. So, while I'm just down here, I'm going to sort this underline out. So, as you can see, she's got quite a scraggy piece of underline and hair growing underneath The here. one mistake people make time and time again when they're first starting out trimming is they never trim low enough down the side of the dog. So they'll stop trimming about, yeah, see my hand, there. about here, <laughs> yeah. and then you'll have a little bit of a skirt. You can trim right the way down to the bottom of where you yeah. can feel the ribs. So uh, and just taking that extra bit further down will give you a much nicer finish to your a, dog. A good guide is the point of the elbow. If you trim down the body to the point of the elbow, yeah, then basically anything under there, that needs to come off. And the easiest way to do that is put a bit of chalk on your finger and just pull a few hairs at a time. Now you might find the underlines a particularly sensitive area yes. on the dogs. So this is one area, be really careful not to pull out too many hairs. I mean, you don't want to be pulling out big clumps of hair anywhere on the dog. Um, but you know, on their body coat, they will tolerate having more pulled out than what they will in their underline. With their underline, if you take out a big chump, they will yelp and they might try to take a pot shot at you and bite you. 
Yeah, it uh, is. You know, you can't blame them because it is un- it is uncomfortable if you try to do too much at a time. But you can see Rachel's pulling out a few hairs at a time. She's hardly even reacting. She's just looking around like, what are you doing? And this is a girl who's not on the table every week. She's fairly young. She's fairly inexperienced. You know, she's just a raw baby. And... Um, you know, she's not used to having this done all the This is probably only about the fourth time she's ever had really a big trim. You know, so she's not been on the table many times at all having this done. She, she would have been on the table lots having brushes and having fun time, but she hasn't been yeah. had much table time of actually having a full trim. And again, when we were talking about the line, where the line ends... Just think of yourself with a line straight down and then just pull these little bits off, just a few hairs. You know, we're not making a show tidy, we're just keeping her in a nice kennel trim just to tidy over, keep her comfortable, keep her healthy. Good girl. And if you find you're struggling because this hair's sticking out where you're trimmed down, just pull it back, put your hand there and just pull it back out the way. And I think uh, getting a, a tidy underline makes a huge difference to uh, just the overall outline of the dog when you finish trimming them. Uh, I think it's an area that very much gets neglected when people are doing pet trims. Yeah. And also, I think it is quite important to, to trim that short if you can because it is an area yeah. that tends to get a lot of mats in it as well. Good girl. He's a kid. And you will often find on an underline, they'll give you... It's not very often I trim an underline, um, either on my regular pets that come in or new ones that come in. They sort of guide you with the hair, really. Like, I'm not looking for a perfect straight line today, but, like, that's naturally come down to that level, you know? Um, so I could see where all the long, straggly bits are. Did you, <laughs> she is, she's getting a bit tired now, to be fair to her. Good girl. You've been a good girl. Do you want a little stretch, stretch, stretch and legs for a minute? Mm-hmm. You doing okay? Hi. <laughs> yeah, you can see she's really traumatised by all of this today. Good girl. To put the charger back in again before we go flat. I know I'm not always getting the perfect angle, everybody, but unfortunately the phone battery keeps dying, so I have to keep going back to the charger, which limits where I can go around the room a little bit. So again, you can see where Rachel's taking that. Yes, the skin is pink. It's skin, that is a natural colour of her skin, but it is not red and it's not inflamed because we're not ripping it out in big chunks. And uh, Rachel's showing quite nicely there as well of pulling the hair in a nice straight way with a knife. What you don't want to be doing is curling your knife like you're making yeah. a ribbon for this, a cake because then all the this, coat will stick out. This curling, that's not what you want to do. If you curl the coat, you 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 actually make the coat have a curl and, to it and it all have little sticky outfits everywhere. You've got more chances well of cutting the coat if you're doing that. You're just pulling it and pulling it down straight away. And like I said before, just work the same area. Don't get hodgepodging all over the different places. Look, if I was doing this shoulder and she was getting really uncomfortable and she wasn't happy with it, I would start doing the other shoulder. But I would make sure I'd finish both shoulders. I wouldn't leave one shoulder done and one shoulder undone. And I wouldn't start doing part of the body coat if she was injuring about me doing her shoulders because then I'd have a part trim body coat and a part trim shoulder and 
if you're not going to get it all done you're better off just either having your flat work done or your body work done and this is an area that's a little bit sensitive where i'm coming up to now right above the elbow where the shoulder joins the body so you just have to be mindful of that try and take a few less hairs at a time there it might take you 20 minutes to do that one spot uh, and i'm not exaggerating there especially if you're just starting to trim and have a go this area here could take you about 20 minutes to do. And if your dog's not been used to having it done, and you're yeah. not used to handing on the table, they will really try to sit down a lot when you're doing this. And, uh, you know, just use those handling techniques, like we said, put your hand underneath the, the dog's rear to support them and pull the skin from the other side. So where Rachel's got it, where, where it's pink, where we call the flat work and where the body coat's a bit longer, that is sort of naturally how she has got the layer in her coat at the moment. Um, you, I suppose you do trim the flat work with a, uh, maybe a little bit tighter grip on the hair, but I don't want to make it too complicated and start totally confusing everybody. But mostly that's naturally how it comes down. Even if you try to leave the same layer down her shoulders as what you do on her body, it's just not really there, is it, on this girl no. to leave? No. Well, you find generally dogs, you know, this is undercoat. She doesn't really get undercoat. There are not many of them get undercoat down their flat work. It's really under their body coat. And every time you trim a dog, how they come down, so obviously, yes, there's some skill in, you know, how much you take off and taking it off in the right areas. But really, however you, this dog comes down, very much depends on the last time it was trimmed. And I can see Linda's just put a comment there. It's more about what's underneath than what's pulled out from the yes. top. And what is underneath is very dependent on how much that coat's been worked in the past. So this girl hasn't had her coat worked. No. So there's no layer growing underneath that. No. And, and that's why I said, you know, if you pull it evenly, it grows evenly. So next time you come to trim it, if you pulled it unevenly last time, you might find that you've got a patch where it comes down. And then it, you might have a piece of body coat that comes down like that. And then you have a patch that comes down to an undercoat. Because if you didn't trim it evenly, it's going to be patchy when you come to trim it again. And that's also, and that's been a good baby, yes. And that's why also... Um, you know, if you can only have got time to do flat work or one shot or two shoulders, just do the two shoulders. Don't do part of this and this bit here. Everybody tries to do a bit here. This is you automatically end up with that when people start trimming that handprint there. They trim that because that's the easy bit, yeah. and they'll end up with a patch there because that's an easy bit. But they'll end up with coat down to here and bushy bloomers. Because this is difficult and the dogs struggle when, you know, have a bit of a fidget when you're messing with their bum. And, um, what are you doing? Do you want to go and play for a minute? I think you might need to have a couple of minutes in a minute. Let me see if I can get this off here first and we'll give you a few minutes play time. Good girl. Uh, and you can find when you get sort of to about this stage of the dog, when they're sort of about half, three quarters finished, they can really look quite messy. And this girl's looking quite messy because her bits down her front are all tufty and sticking out. And her body coat, you know, sort of trimmed to a different length to what the other bits are. Uh, you just sort of have to hold the faith that when we finish this dog, she will actually look a bit of a fox terrier shape. But I know at the moment it might look like, oh my God, what are those pair doing? They haven't got a clue. <laughs> just hold the faith. No, I haven't got a clue at yeah. all. That's why Dave's there. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? When you're doing this and you've not really been doing it very long or it's your first time, if you end up with making a ball patch somewhere, don't cry about it. Don't worry about it. In two weeks' time, it'll be fully covered. Coat grows. You know, do you think I could trim evenly when I first started? Uh, no, of course I couldn't. Did I make mistakes? Yeah, of course I did. You know, um, and anybody who says they didn't is bloody lying. Or bloody uh, another thing you'll find as well is even if you are really experienced, 
The wire coated terrier breeds, they are, are prone to a little bit of skin problems. If you have had something that's had a little bit of a bad skin, it, you might not have seen it underneath the coat, but then when you trim it, they might have a bold coat there from where they've had a little bit of a skin patch that you know we, we might have missed because it's buried underneath all that coat. So uh, even if it does come down bold, sometimes that's not even a reflection on your trimming. It might be that they've just had a little bit of, you know, not very happy skin, which has come right. I know, darling. I know, it's sensitive there, isn't it? Good girl. Right, good girl. Good girl. And don't be afraid to tell them that they're being good in yeah. a sensible voice. You know, she's been really good. I know she's probably feeling this a bit more where I'm doing at the moment. And she, for a youngster, she's been really good for me. Good girl. Good girl. I know. You're trying your best, aren't you? Um. Good girl. And you can almost see uh. here, we've actually got far more of a layer of coat here then we've got higher up here. George, just give people a bit of an idea there where your sort of your leg yeah. starts just to... So like you could feel when you come down your dog's shoulder, you can feel where the indentation is where the elbow is. You can always put your finger in there, okay? So if you could bring your hand down, you'll feel it. Okay. You know exactly <laughs> where she's <did. laughs> Good girl. So you'll feel it to there. So you don't want to be trimming really below that with this length. Good girl. Because that's part of a leg furnishing. Oh, I know. You're getting bored. She is. She's getting <laughs> a bit tired. Lisa. She's got a double whammy today. She's already done um. half of me earlier. She's got me back on the table. Thought I was done. I'm just going to pull these long bits off because... She really doesn't need them. Ow. Sore finger. Yeah, it's a good job this wasn't last week. I've still got a great big bandage around the end of my finger. That would have been helpful. I know. So for the purpose of today, I am not going to worry about pulling a huge amount off under here and tidying her all up. I just want her in a nice working trim. Now, I did brush all her legs out earlier, and she's going to have lovely leg hair. And the day, the one day, whenever she does uh, get in the ring, she'll have lovely leg hair and lovely coat. But um, obviously, that's not my concern right now. But I know, that's it, you stand there, that's perfect, you stand there. I know as a general guide for her front legs, for you guys, if you see um, the outside of her flat of her shoulder down to the outside of her paw, any of that extra really needs to come off. So I am just gonna, although like the back leg, I'm not gonna trim the leg fully now, but while I'm here at that point on her shoulder, I am gonna take a few of these hairs off. And I'm just gonna put a bit of chalk on my finger. <laughs> yes. And so just... for the question about how long it takes to do, it depends on the dog and what stage their coat is, but I'd say Rachel and I, we're fairly fast at hand trimming and, you know, we can probably do a, a dog if it comes in for a pet hand trim in about two and a half hours, uh, or three if we're, you know, we're bathing them. Um, but I, I would say a, a typical time for somebody to trim, I, I do a pet trim on a, a wire, is probably about four hours. Um, and if you haven't trimmed one before, it's really, it will take you all day. And the other thing is, you know, not being funny, but <clears throat> doing pet... Because the dogs that we trim for show are in good rolling coats and we're working them every <clears throat> week. So, you know, you might be able to trim them in an hour and a half if you're doing them every week. Two hours tops with the bath and condition. These guys, when we're trimming them just in maintenance trims or pet trims, yeah. you know, it's, tired, she is that, getting tired, bless her. Tired, bless her. Um, then, um, you know, it's a much longer process. They've got far more coats. Um, they're not used to being on the table as much. Table at home. If I'm booking the dog in for a hand trim, I will always 
a book it in for a four hour slot but I don't really ever expect a wire to take me quite that long um, but I always like to because if you've got something that hasn't had much table time and it's really difficult and it's really being behaviour on the table that the extra time from having a dog which hasn't been handled and managed it, it takes you more extra time than what actually trimming the dog takes uh, in itself like I said earlier it's about education as much as it is and behaviour um, as it is about the actual trim so it makes a huge difference right now I'm going to get the rest of that stuff off your neck just charge it again <laughs> she's about to use what are you Where's doing it? what are you doing <laughs> good girl she's... waggy tail <laughs> see I'm traumatised can't you tell <laughs> I'm traumatised how dare I yes right a lot of people, I'm going to trim this off down here now. So a lot of people say, where do you start from under the chin? Well, do you want to just give her a little break first and I then do, you can I go actually. through and uh, ask anybody if they've got any yes. questions and go through that for a minute. So I think she probably needs a toilet as well. Do you, do you want to drop her extra? Yeah. I'm going to sort them puppies out, whatever they're doing. So you can have a <laughs> chat to everybody. <laughs> I'll just turn the camera around. <laughs> Hi, everybody. <laughs> God, my hair's delightful today, isn't it? Right. She'll be back soon. We're then going to let her go out the toilet and stretch her legs. So I'm just going to give that girl a break because she's been... Have the puppies to come back into play. She's been on the table a little while and she's starting to get tired. So we're just going to give her a break so she can have a drink, stretch her legs and go to the bathroom because she's not very old. So, and she's not used to being on the table. So has anybody got any questions so far? Hi everybody and I just want to say thanks to everybody um, for joining us today. Like I said, you know, it's not meant to be a high level show trimming day or a breed seminar day. It's literally about working maintenance trims and for people who've never had a go um, and uh, for those many pet owners um, out there who are struggling while they can't get to the groomers. Hi, Steph. Yeah, Kevin is the perfect wire shape, lol. <laughs> yeah, we could all do with some Kevin therapy. Um, so, if anybody's got any questions, like I said, quite happy to answer what we can. And we will try and do a question and answer sheet. Um, and we're we'll... getting Kevin actually because he is a good example of a different sort of wire coat, isn't it? Good luck. So you can have a ground. <laughs> God, Kevin's going to video bomb the wire demo. What can I say? Thanks, Steph. That's it. But actually, Dave's right. It is a good example of how a different um, wire coat is. Um, so I am going to finish off Pinky's head and just down her shoulder and go over a leg trim when she's had a bit of a break. Dave's just gone to get Kevin, who's a grand Basset Griffon Von Dean and not a White Fox Terrier, although he's in love with a White Fox Terrier Come girl. On, Kev. <laughs> so, say hello to Kev. <laughs> you heard in there, Kev. So, no, what I was saying was we're gonna do a question and answer sheet um, and we'll add it up on the Wire Association website at the when we've collated it, um, so that if anybody wants to re-watch the video or um, miss the answers to anything, they can go back and have a look. Kev! Kev! Can we say hello, Kev? What's it doing, Kev? What are you doing, Kev? Hello! <laughs> you doing, big boy? What are you doing? Hello. I know. I tell you, it's like sleeping with a person when you wake up with him in the morning. So, Kev has a wire coat. Um, and you don't generally trim grands. We're struggling to keep our hands off him because we really want to and we're not going to because we'll get in really lots of trouble because they're supposed to be a bit shaggy. But this is a wire coat. What are you doing, Kev? Um, he has got a wire coat, um, but it is a different texture to a wire fox terrier. Um, but the principles are exactly the same. Um, 
Hi guys, say hi. Yeah, that's not helpful. So the principles are exactly the same in how he would be trimmed um, and how coat grows, why coat grows. But this grows to a much longer length, uh, naturally to a much longer length that is actually desirable. So, um, Hello, Kat. <laughs> Good boy. Showing everyone your nice wire fox pair of your ears. <laughs> What are you up to in there, Kim? Dickhead! Good boy. Good boy. We could probably go on the floor. Right. Should we go and get so, the main no. girl back now as you are not a wire fox carrier, Kevin? Yeah, <laughs> Steph, you're right. Um, oh they should have a natural look and their undercoat is completely different. They don't get that thick coconut matting that the wires do. Um, and then naturally, longer in length, the wire coat grows. Um, like I say, we're trying really hard not to put our hands on him, and it's really hard not to, but he's so cute. So. Good boy. Good boy. Yes, yeah, Steph, you're busy, girl, aren't you? Busy, yeah. busy. So. Let me just remove the care and see. Not Don't again. worry, we're just getting to the head on, and ear part now. Head. We haven't quite finished. Because her ladyship's just come back in after having a bit of a toilet break and a drink break. So we'll get back to her now. Uh, how do we turn this back around? The thing at the bottom. Oh, yeah. There we go. Hello again, Pinky. So, um, I'm just going to go back to... So no, we haven't um, shown how to do anything on the, the ears yet. So, I'm just going to finish this little bit off under here. She just needed to have a break for a few minutes. So, um, real simple to... Come in, Danny. Good girl. I know. I know, I know, I know, I know. Recharged your batteries now, haven't you? Right. So as Dave said before, an easy way to have a bit of control of the head is to grab their whiskers under the chin. <laughs> so as you can see, I've took this side off earlier this morning. Um, so I'm um, going to just finish this off and balance it off by taking this off. So people often say, where do you trim from? If you feel under the chin, there's a V where the jaw develops. Here, there's a V. And that's the bone structure of the under jaw. Okay, if you feel where that, there's an indentation where it starts before it becomes the solid under jaw, it's about there. If you take that as just a general guide point and pull everything off behind it, that's a good guide for you at home. And we're doing your, you know, just having a go with your pets and keeping them tidy. Why have you been sticking your face? Eh? You've done your face. Eh? We're just trying to give you some general ideas of yeah. the areas to go for the shapes. Now, if we've so, got something that we were showing, which this demonstration is not intended to be at all today, you know, we will try to grow hair in places to make things look better than they are, to accentuate good points, to hide not so good points. So, you know, we, we will deviate, but these are some really nice basic lines to get a wire fox terrier shape. Good girl. I oh, know. Steady, 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 steady. Good girl. Good girl. So, you haven't got to grip them like a vice. Just put your thumb under their head and your hand over the muzzle and just lift the head to get underneath and again it's tip of the knife you know you're not trying to take tons of hair off at one go just follow the lines and uh, where when you're doing here and you're holding the head up it's it's more difficult to pull the skin tight yeah. Um, but by raising the head so the dog's nose is looking up to the ceiling, you will stretch that skin a little bit. Um, whereas if their head's down and you try to pull it and the skin's loose, that's when you'll be more likely to get sore patches. So really try to hold that head up to stretch the skin. Good girl. 
And this is about Lee managing. And again, you can see all where Rachel's trimming, all that where it's pink and it's close. It's pink, but it's not sore and it's not inflamed. We haven't damaged the skin. We've just, there's just no coat left there. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl. So I'm actually holding her skin on her neck from the back of her neck. So I've got it here. Okay, so yeah, I'm a bit pinky. Good girl. I'm, I'm supporting this. I'm put, keeping this taut here by just holding this behind, and I'm not grabbing her or pinching her. I'm just keeping a bit of tension on it while I'm pulling. And again, always pull in the direction that the coat grows. You want to be taking a few hairs at a time. And just where you're doing, just above there, they tend to have a natural swirl, yeah, don't they? So you follow the swirl, swirl. in, uh, follow it round in the circle that it goes. Let's see if I can get a good view of. There. It's a bit difficult to see a it's swirl, like a, isn't it? But it's like a natural crown. Yeah, I don't know if you can appreciate, but they they all have it. Just here that the hair will grow sort of in a spiral shape and when you're trimming you try to always still make sure yeah. you're pulling it the way that the hair grows so you have to sort of turn and trim upwards and, and yeah. yeah and that is an area that quite often will end up a bit sore if you don't do that if you start pulling it against the growth again that's that's something that will make the skin really sore i have seen a uh, a few videos on YouTube where they are promoting pulling the hair against the direction of the growth. Please don't do it. Your your dogs won't like it. It is uncomfortable. It it will really upset their skin. Um, and it's when people do things like that and they end up with horrendous skin that hand trimmers get a reputation that this is a cruel process. It shouldn't be cruel. So I'm just going to, this is what we call the point of shoulder. So from the point of shoulder down here again to where the top of her leg is, here you get a myriad of different ways the hair grows. It grows up, it grows off to the side. And again, um, some of the loose hairs you'll be able to pull forward and it will just come out. But you need to trim it really in the direction it grows. So at the minute this bit's going down, and then this bit's coming across. Yeah, Linda's just put a thing on there. Pet clipping in this area, neck. Um, so some people, if they're doing a pet trim, mm -hmm. you, you know, underneath the, the, so the neck up here. Sorry, I'm just yeah. moving away from where yeah. Rachel. Um, so under the neck, some people will clip that. It's not an area you see. It is a difficult area to hand trim, um, particularly over the bony ridge of the under jaw. Um, so, you know, if people clip under there, you can still get a really nice finished Fox Terrier. Um, it is very time saving. Uh, with this girl, she is going to be shown and we won't do it because the hair will stick out different there if we do that and it won't yeah. be the correct texture. So, so even though she's not having a show trim now, in the future she will be shown. And once you start clipping it, it makes it much harder then to pull it in the future. Um, and if you clip it and then try to pull it in four or five weeks, you'll probably make the skin sore. So it's a bit, once you've started clipping under there, it's something you, you probably want to carry on with. A lot of pet groomers will actually clip from here just down to buy their Adam's apple. So just through there or down to the V. Um, because a lot of pet owners are a bit horrified when they come We've back. decided today not to, to not to have a dog on and do any clipping because we thought a lot of people that are at home that are in lockdown that have never trimmed their dogs before probably won't have any clippers anyway. So it's all well and good now. us saying this is where you clip to and get yourself yeah. some clippers. But when you haven't got them and you're not going to be able to get them at the moment, it's probably not really that helpful. And you haven't been taught how to use yeah. them. And, and clippers can also be dangerous if not taught how to use them properly.
And, you know, some people where Rachel's just pulling now, they will thin in scissor that a bit. Again, if you thin in scissor it, you can still get, you know, a fairly tidy wire fox terrier finish. But once you've thin in scissor that, the next time you come to pull it, it will be, if you decide to pull it again the next time, it will be hard to pull. It might make the skin a bit sore. So once you thin in scissor it, it's probably a process. You should carry on thin in scissor in it in, in trims in the future. And just what I've done is I've just pulled out a few hairs that were sticking down here and made them in balance with the rest of the underline that we did earlier. <coughs> you can lift the leg up just. Yeah. Just going to get the rest of that off down the side of the neck, and then I'm going to do a head and her ears. So, seem to have a few people who are a bit. Worried. Yeah, when, when we do the grooming seminars, one of the things that we have, we have all people, we, all levels of people coming on our grooming seminar from fairly exper experienced people to people that have never had to go at hand trimming at all. And one of the questions we always get is how do we trim the head to look like a fox terrier? So, even though Rachel's not really going to trim the legs very much for the purpose of this um she is going to trim the head to try to show you how to get a, a, a nice fox terrier shape on the head i'm going to give you the basics for the legs but i'm not going to um wax lyrical about it i'm not going to go on about leg furnishings forever i'm going to give you some basic lines um i don't know what he's doing in there i'm just going to get this off Good girl. So thinning scissors, a question about thinning scissors. So um, these are the sort of thinning scissors I uh, suggest people get, if I can get them there on the camera. Can you just see those? So the one side of the blade is like a normal scissor blade and the other side's um, got like uh, teeth indentations on it. You can get um, thinning scissors which have got like the, the tooth side on each side uh, but if you're only going to buy one set and you haven't got any I'd probably use your money on these the other ones are nicer to get I suppose a better finish but it takes a little bit more work and they're not not really something I would have if I was starting out grooming uh, to be honest I don't think we've even got a set anymore which has got teeth on both sides no And to be honest, the thinning scissors don't really, any of our our own wire fox terriers, the thinning scissors wouldn't really touch. We would rarely use them on a pet trim. Um, we tend to have them more for the other breeds that we do, not really the wire coated breeds. Uh, some people will use, if you're clipping a dog, so you know, say you've got an Airedale or a Welsh or a wire coming in for a trim. Some people will use like thinning scissors to like um, take density out of the face hair. Because when you clip and scissor face hair, you can get really, really dense, bushy face hair. Particularly on Airedales. I don't know why, but Airedales always get <laughs> loads of clumps of face hair. So you can use your thinning scissors to... You, you can use them sort of in two ways. You can do use them to take length off a, a coat. Or you can use them to take density out of a coat. So they can be quite a handy tool if you if you clip it or... Uh, and scissor in your dogs just to take some of the density out of those faces um but on, on our own dogs we don't really do that and um, you don't need to necessarily pull closer to the skin but you do probably need to just put a bit more pressure on your knife when you've got the coat 
and <clears throat> you need to support the head a bit more or use the noose to support the head a bit more which with her is what I'm going to do because <laughs> she's a bit of a pudding and she's not that experienced on the table so she's not used to weight bearing through me um, as much as some of the others would be So, as you can see, I've trimmed half of her earlier. So, um, and she's got more coat here than she's got here because that's what she got. And as we're talking about just keeping them in a basic kennel maintenance trim. This isn't about getting her ready for a show right now. This is nowhere near doing a show trim at all. It's just a basic maintenance trim. So she's got a good layer here on the side of her head underneath the long stuff. Hello. Um, and she was closer here. And that's fine. That doesn't bother me at all. In the future, when I come to put her in a show trim, yeah. I'll take all that off. Uh, she'll have a completely different trim on her. But that's not the purpose of today. So, you just need to be mindful. Their faces are sensitive. Okay? We know they like hunting. And we mm. know they like sticking their faces where they shouldn't <laughs> be. And we know they can mm. scrap like good ones when they want to but faces are sensitive. And especially on youngsters, um, you know, you just don't want to be manhandling them around the face. You don't want to be manhandling any dogs. But the youngsters, like, she's really not used to me doing this very often. So I don't want her to have a bad experience with this. Um, my biggest uh, experience she'll have today is her having to hold her head or be in a position that she's not used to maintaining for a, lot, a period of time. Um, as you can see, she likes sticking her nose through the <laughs> bent fence. So if you've got hair missing, it's a good point actually, oh. because she's got good black nose, but she's got a pink line here where her muzzle furnishings come to, um, and these are all white. Um, but uh, she likes sticking her face through a fence. So that is the perfect shape of where she sticks her face to. Um, and you find lots of dogs have that, that comfort trimming, because that's been a nosy rosy, isn't it? Or a nosy pinky, anyway. <laughs> okay. And underneath here as well, this area here, mm -hmm. to just behind the point of the canine, that needs to come off. And I would say, pull it. Some people say, use thinning scissors or use scissors, pull it. Because this, and I'm not blocking off a windpipe there, I've just got my hand loosely over the front of her nose. Because that mats horribly there. It gets in their food, it gets in everything. And you need a bit of it. Been swinging off the mesh as well by the looks of it for a young girl, so she needs her teeth cleaning and looking at. So yeah, I would clean all that off because it's just an area and not so much on wires, on young wires, but older wires, they get a bit of um, saggy lip, I call it. Um, so they don't have the same tightness through their lips and they can actually sometimes, I have known them get a bit of fungal infection here because they've had food and saliva and basically crap all stuck in there. So yeah, pull it off, get it cleaned off. Make it a clean area, hygienic area. Right. And so. you can see already under there, she hasn't got an awful lot of beard underneath her chin and they don't need huge, great, big tufts. No. They actually look better for having a bit less under there sometimes. So, before we trim any more of her, off her face, we basically need to look at, um, you know... <clears throat> Why do we trim a wire fox terrier head the way we do? And this doesn't matter whether it's a pet, it's clipped, it's hand stripped, or it's a show dog. A wire fox terrier head is a wire fox terrier head. And different groomers, and I'm going to say breed specialist groomers, and uh, people who work with the breed on a professional level, and, and very experienced uh, breed Oh, the breeders and exhibitors, will all trim heads slightly differently. And that is for a reason of the dog itself, the construction of the dog, and how they like them to look. But there are some basic principles to trimming a wire fox terrier head 
that everybody follows in general. Um, and that relates to the form of a fox terrier's head and the construction of a, a fox terrier's head. So a fox terrier generally has a lean head. You know, they don't have thick heads. They, well, they shouldn't have thick heads, but they have lean heads, they have flat heads, and they have a good proportion of muzzle to back skull. And normally it's got to be a minimum of 50-50. Normally it is slightly longer in the muzzle than it is to the back skull. And that projects the image of a long face, a long, strong face. So when we groom them, and I have lovely dark eyes, full of mischief, <laughs> full of mischief and fire and spirit and personality. So the trims, and they have ears that are high set and spoon shaped, and they carry them high on the, on the head. I know some pets have got one up, one down, two up, two down, you know. We don't worry about that, but the placement of the ears is in keeping of keeping that look of their head. Um, you know, they use their head traditionally for going down sets and holes and investigating things and nozicking where they don't need to be nozicking, which is exactly why she's got no hair on her nose. So when we trim the head, we're trimming the head to um, show that shape and show that feature. So, and we want to make the most of that. So when people are doing show trims, that's why they are slightly different because we're not trying to make the most of those features of the head. But even for pet trims, you still want to make a fox terrier look like a fox terrier. So we have a few basic lines that we trim it to. Come here, darling. Good girl, good girl. So, I'll show on this side that I've done. Oh, Hello, oh, Jeannie, oh. who's just tuned in. <laughs> So, on this side of the face, where she has been nozicking, that I trimmed earlier, just roughly out. So, generally... Hello, Harold. Bet you're struggling in Ireland, not being able to get to the pub. <laughs> <laughs> so, basically, for you pet guys at home who are trying to do just some maintenance trims and keep them tidy, your basic line is, you want to try and keep this area in front of the eye clear, really. Um, dogs do get sleep in their eye. Wires are known to get a bit of hay fever, and it is the weather. Um, I'm sure some people will be shocked at that, but they can get hay fever. So you want to make sure that this area is all cleared. So roughly, you want to line from the corner of the eye out along the corner of the muzzle where the nose is, back in. So you want to clean all that area out, all the way along. Just nicely for maintenance. We generally, anything from the corner of the eye, sticking out. You pull that through because it's yeah. making it look a bit hard for people to see. That's it. So, from the corner of the eye, from the side of the head, anything that sticks out past there, really, you need to take off. Okay? Just as a general guide. And you want to go from the corner of the eye back round to the other corner of the eye and take everything off behind. Now, obviously, like I said, for show trims, we do things slightly different to each need of the dog or how we want them to look. But that is the basic premise over doing a wire fox terrier head. And also, if they have got hair on their muzzle, Miss Pinky Pants, basically, you want that to be flat as well. So from the flat head, flat forward. So really, I'd like her to have hair here. So which is why normally they've got a nice little trumpet going on or a bit of fill here and a nice trumpet of hair coming forward. Okay. But obviously certain people like sticking their faces where they're not needed. So I'm talking about that now because I'm going to take this area off here. So when I take this off here, I've got to be aware of what I want to keep here. And basically I don't want to keep any of that. So all that behind there. And roughly from the corner of the eye down to the corner of the mouth. Everything behind there needs to just come off. And for those with other breeds, you know, your Welsh, your wires, your air does, okay. these lines will be slightly different, but we're focusing on a wire fox terrier yeah. today. So, <clears throat> roughly corner of the eye to the corner of the mouth, everything off. Corner of the inside eye round to the corner of the outside eye, everything behind off. Okay. So it's just a basic line to trim to, to get the look of a wire fox terrier. So, I'm just going to take the rest of this off, which you probably won't be very impressed about, but it's going to happen. 
Come on, you see. Good girl. So I always use a bit of chalk here. You, like I said, you don't need to take more hair or be heavier handed, but you need to put more pressure through you, through the hair and the knife as you pull in, because it is a bit tougher here. And I'm gonna stand up for this because I'm a short ass. So, I know, it's so okay, I'm getting excited. What, you think you're done? You're not done? No, no. Good girl, good girl, good girl. No, 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 come on. Good girl. As I said, she's quite a novice and experienced bitch, so she's all quite, she's been really good <laughs> today. Oh no! You're getting silly now. Yeah, but we're not doing silly enough, so I need to trim your head. I oh, know, I love you too. Okay, can we do this now? Can we? Good girl. Steady, 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 steady. So, from what I pulled earlier, I'm literally just taking this off back here. And I'm just holding the front of her nose just to support her. And from this here, I know I've got to go from the corner of the eye back and around. And I'd normally do that from the front, but I know where I'm trimming to, so. Right, good girl, good girl, good girl. Good girl. And when you get to by the corner of the eye, it is more sensitive, so just be gentle. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl. You know, you will get a lot of people when they, even if they hand trim the body coats or clip off the, the head. Um, if we're having things in for pet trims, we tend not to because that, that tan will fade almost wide. For those of you that were here at the beginning, you saw Betty, um, who was a clip, previously clipped off dog. Uh, and, you know, you totally lose that colour and texture on the head. Managing ears, honestly, you don't want to be pulling at their ears and like trying to pull their ears off their heads and plastering them everywhere, like you know, pulling them really taut. But you do need to just hold them out the way and hold them to the side of the head while you're just doing this bit of trimming. And it's really important, particularly with puppies, um, being Good gentle girl. with their ears because if you really yank on a puppy's ear when you're trying to trim its head, yeah. you can actually pull the folds out of their ears. And then they can end up with nice stuck up pricked ears. <laughs> yeah. Good girl. Good girl. Oh, I know, darling. Good girl. And if you just hold the ear out the way and have your thumb there, it's another way of just holding a bit of tension in the face while you're trimming. So it's not pulling the head around. And this is a sensitive area. Just take a few hairs at a time. It will take longer. They may struggle. But just a few hairs at a time. And if you do that like that every time, it will become much easier to trim them in the long run. And even if you clip your dog everywhere else, I would not recommend clipping and cutting the hairs down the ear. The hairs that are actually down the ear, which I'm sure Rachel will show you in a minute yeah. when she's finished her patch, they are much better pulled. And anybody okay. that's on here, well, I know how I've seen Harold's name pop up with Kerry Blues, or no, Kerry Blues ears can be a nightmare to pull, but it's a job that has to be done. <laughs> Muzzle and gauntlets wins the day <laughs> with a Kerry blue. <laughs> so we've got a question. Can we replace chalk with baby powder, which is yes, more available? you can do. The only thing I'll say about baby powder is it's a bit softer in texture. So it's not quite as abrasive as chalk. You can get chalk through the Wild Fox Terrier Association, but baby powder um, is, is a good... Is a good substitute if you can't get anything else. Yes, but it is just a bit yeah. it is just a bit smoother. Um it's it's not quite as abrasive. Um so you might find it doesn't have quite the same as effect. Good 
Good girl. You've been a very good baby. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl. No, no. And this is a difficult area to trim for them and for people who aren't experienced because you do need to just put a bit more force on your knife as you pull the hair. And like I said, she has got a different length down her cheeks to what she has in other places on her neck. Right, I just need to move her lead a little bit. Um, so with the chalk, no, you don't have to use chalk. Everything here you can do without the chalk. It just gives you a little bit of extra grip. But, you know, if you haven't got any chalk, it doesn't mean you can't pull the coat. Yeah, I mean, I could still pull this now even without uh, And no, you don't have to bathe in order to remove no. the chalk. Actually, we do sometimes use chalk as a bit of a cleaning agent on wire coats. Um, you might get dogs which have allergies to all kinds of things, but I can honestly say I have never met a wire fox terrier which I've known to have an allergy to chalk. It is a really nice, natural cleaning agent for them. Um, and like I said earlier, I don't know if you're around them, but uh, if you've got greasy wire coats, which, you know, it's not unusual in a wire to have a greasy coat, you can use the chalk, put it all through the coat and then brush it back, back out again. It can help get some of that grease out the coat and helps their skin a little bit. Yeah. And always take a minute just to let them stretch and move their neck muscles and head muscles when you've had them <coughs> in one position for a couple of minutes because they can get stiff. You know, she's a young bitch. I don't, you know, I mean, although she wasn't happy about, you know, standing there for that minute while I was doing that, she's not traumatised in any way. She's quite happy. So, the knife we're using is a wire fox terrier knife. Um, I've got one here. Um, so that's what we're using and uh, so these wire fox terrier association knives you get different sizes so what we're using today i don't know if you can see the letters there is a fl2b um which we sort of will call sort of a medium knife um, you can get all different knives with all different teeth with all different widths you can do everything that we're doing today with that knife getting the knives with um, different width teeth and things just makes the process you know, easier in some places so uh, as a general rule the closer you want the coat trimmed the closer you want the teeth together that's uh, not really an exact science it might not be what we always do but where it's close down the front here i would use teeth much closer together generally than i would use on the body coat uh, where you want the coat a bit longer And like a medium knife's fine for just doing these kennel trims and maintenance trims, you know. Right, so I know people, hello. So know. yeah, they, we all of the knives come in left hand, right handed um, versions. Right, so as you can see, I've took the rest of that off down her neck and her front. And there's no redness or soreness there, it's not inflamed. <laughs> Come here, girl. So she's got two sides that match again. Um, <laughs> so I'm just going to go over this ear. As you can see, she's still got quite a lot of hair on that ear, um, but it looked like this this morning. Um, there's no need for her ears to be pulled about a lot and for them to be really, really close right now. The important issue is that the insides of the ears are cleaned and cleared off and that the excess hair is off and that she just gets used to it being done. So, uh, if I show you the befores and afters of insides of ears, if she'll keep her head still, which Stop she might not. This. Come here. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, <laughs> you're very know. interested in everything. So. Right, this is a, the done ear inside. Okay. As I say, still a few hairs there, you know, we haven't pulled every hair. I haven't gone absolutely crazy You, you there. Could, could pull a few more. But, but uh, you can see down the ear canal. Stop it. I know. Okay. Where is this one? <laughs> He's just trying to stay still a little bit. bit <laughs> Come on. Good girl. So that's a before. So as you can see, there's quite a lot more hair there. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to pull this off around here with finger and thumb. Okay. Just take the excess off with a knife on the top and just leave a layer like I have on this side. 
Yeah, I know, I'm messing with your ears. And I'm just going to take this excess off on the outside. And when I just mentioned about, even if you clip your dog to pull the hairs, I'm not talking about these hairs around the ear. We're if you clip and scissor, I'm talking about the ones that actually carve yeah. from down the canal. Because if you keep those pulled, they'll have much better ear health. But don't pull that out in great big clumps. No. Here, you really, really need to pull like one and two hairs at a time. Yeah, that's out of her ear canal, okay? Uh, if you start pulling them out in big clumps, you'll make their ear more inflamed and it's worse than not doing it at all. Yeah, good girl. And this is a highly sensitive area. And it's good if you get a bit of chalk on your your, yeah. your fingers before you do this to give you a bit of extra This grit. is a highly sensitive area. Very experienced breeders, um, vets and very mm. experienced groomers will actually probably use forceps. But there is no way I'm showing you guys the use of forceps today. Um, because really, you don't need it. And uh, what you want to make sure as well that you pull those hairs before you put anything down their ears. Like if you've got your dogs on eardrops or whatever, you don't want to put some oily, oily, greasy drops down and then start trying to pull those hairs out because it would be really, really difficult. When you trim ears... Always make sure you've got your hand either, if you're trimming the outside, that you've got the finger Let's inside. Yeah. If you're trimming the outside of the ear here, put your finger in the inside of the ear in the crook of the V to support the ear while you trim. If you're trimming the inside of the ear, make sure you've got your fingers behind the ear to support the ear while you're doing it. Never just leave an ear unsupported. And this is the one area when I'm doing, if I've got a spare pair of hands, I will say to somebody, can you just come and hold the dog's head straight? Steady, 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 steady. I know, darling, but it's got to come off. You can't keep this. And there's no easy way. And they may cry when you do this. And it's just Good oh, girl. an awful thing they have to have done. It's a bit like ripping a plaster and last it pass plaster off. Good girl, stand. I know, I know, good girl. Come on, I know, come on, stand up, stand up. Good girl, I know, good girl. Come on, we'll do this as nicely as possible. And again, make sure you pull the hair in the direction it grows here, because around the ears it can grow in all sorts of directions. Yeah. Good girl, I know, I know. I know, darling. Shh, 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 shh. I know. Good girl, good girl. Come here. And this is the one part. She actually doesn't like her face being held, I don't think. Can you just hold her under her chin? <laughs> Come on, good girl. That's it. That's it. Good girl. I know it's tender. But even so, we're not making it sore when we're doing this. We're just literally taking a few hairs at a time. No, no, good girl. That's better. She just doesn't like having a face held, I don't think. Like I say, this really isn't an easy area for them. So be patient. Take the time. Be considerate to them. Good girl. I mean, it might be as pet owners when they're sitting on your lap at night. You might find they get used to you pulling just a few hairs every night. Instead of you trying to do it all in one big block. But just be mindful. You know, I do find that pet grooming is best done on a table and they know that's what's happening there. Whereas if you're trying to, you should never really try and do this really on the floor with them or in an area that's a relaxation place for them. But I do know of one or two people who are trying to take a few hairs when they're sitting on the laps on. And it works for them and that's fine, but uh, I do have my reservations about it. So we've got a question here. Why pull that outside ear hair when it hurts them? 
Well, because if you cut it, you're just making an area that makes soft hair um, and it will mat and it will collect wax more and it makes it more unhealthy. You've got far more chance of infections occurring when it keeps getting cut than when if you pull it. And I mean, she's not... I think her biggest protest, to be honest, was about having her face held rather than anything else. It is a sensitive area, um, but she's not protesting now um, and she's less restricted now than what she was. You can see oh, I'm only just holding her under the chin. You know, she can, she can move her head oh, around. I'm not stopping her moving I her head. I have to say, her, and I think that's, you know, you have to be mindful of that when you're working with your dogs. Each dog is different. She obviously doesn't like having her face covered or her face held fully. She's quite happy with it under the chin. And I, one thing I'll say with this bitch, if I got the clippers now and put them by her ears, <laughs> she's never been clipped. She, the, the noise of the clippers, she would probably try to jump off the table. You know. Um, but, you know, if they if they use the clippers and they are clipped, you know, you can clip it. But like Rachel says, the hair there, it will mat up more easily. Um, and look, at the end of the day, this is why I coat the same as everywhere else. This is designed to come out. You know, it's not meant to be coat that stops in there and gets cut. But it's how you manage it. Doing a few hairs at a time like this and taking your time and being patient and being considerate to their needs is a far more effective and beneficial way in the long run of doing it than trying to take an easy way out for us and just using clippers or scissors. And like I say, I think her objections are really more about having her face held than it is about having the process done. So we've got another question there. How do you know if you're breaking the hairs rather than pulling from the root? Okay, um, okay. so like that's out of her body coat. If it's coming out in a whole strip like that, you're pulling that out by the root. That's not been cut in any way. And you'll have that same effect when you're using your knife. Cut hair, you can see it. Uh, so, no, you don't have to be a member to order products. No, nope, no. Although we would obviously love for some of you that aren't members to join up and be members, um, to buy things through our shop, you, you don't need to be a member. No, we, um, we're a very active club. We do seminars and for grooming and just breed knowledge and lots of things going on. So, um, we, we'd love to have... We, our membership is growing year by year, actually, at the minute. Um, we're quite inclusive towards pet owners. We're not exclusive to show people. Um, Good we're, girl. Good the girl. purpose of the White Fox Terrier Association, it is a parent club. It is there for the breed. <laughs> Good girl. Yeah. I know. She says, oh, it wasn't you too know. bad until you got to this <laughs> bit. Good girl. Good girl. Come on, don't fight it. Don't fight it. Good girl. So, um... This is the easy bit. So yeah, I mean, the White Fox Terrier is for the betterment of the breed, and uh, we're here to promote and support the breed as a parent club. So um, you know, it's not just about show folk; it's about the breed. So that's why the club is there. Good girl. <laughs> Come here. Come here. Shh, shh. What are you doing? And the the reason I'm holding her rather than letting Rachel pull her, it's not really about stopping her m moving to make our job easier. It's about not wanting to pull on her ears too much. Um, because if, if she turns her head a lot more, she can start to pull those ears, pull the folds out of them, and it'll be more uncomfortable for her. She is only a young girl, and she's a very novice girl. She's not an experienced table dog. Um, so I'm literally... Just taking the excess hair, hair off the outside of her ears today. I'm not and I think ears are, they are one of the harder areas to trim because it's really when it tests you at pulling just a few hairs so, at a time. Finger in the fold of the ear to support the ear and just take a few hairs. Just those few loose hairs. This is not a race. It doesn't matter how long it takes you. Just make sure you're supporting the ear from underneath as you're doing it. And if we've got like a, a young puppy, I mean, this girl's about 12 months old, a little bit older probably. Um, if we've got a younger puppy, we might not take all the hair off their ears. 
Um, we might take just a little bit because if we take too much, they can be more prone to getting um, pricked up ears, which isn't really what we want for the breed. We like them to have that nice fold in their ear. Uh, so sometimes we'll leave more coat on their ears, on the particularly on the outside. We still tend to clean off the inside. So I'm just lightly going over the inside of her ears, just very lightly, just to take off any loose hairs. You know, like I said, this isn't like show trimming. This is working trim, kennel trim, just to keep her tidy, ticking over. Just to promote a bit of growth. Right, me say. Good girl. Good girl. We'll go back to her face now. Yes. Let me plug this in then because I can do that from here. Hello. <laughs> good girl, Pinky. Hi, you're still my friend. Yeah. He's a good girl. <gasps> and as you can see, although there was a couple of difficult minutes for her because she was having that, because we've been patient, she's still quite happy with us on the table. She's not panting, she's not distressed. Um, you, know. uh, you can see here, she's doing a lovely demonstration of when they've had their ears trimmed, how they can fold them in all sorts <laughs> of interesting places. When they're doing that, if you just gently massage the back of the ear, yeah. it can help just get it to sit where we want it. So they look like a fox terrier, not a fraggle, for anybody that remembers Fraggle Rock. <laughs> She hasn't had much work done on her face at all or anywhere else. So she has no layers, what we call layers of coat within her face hair. And we've sort of deliberately chose her to give you guys a more realistic expectation if you've not trimmed your dogs at home before of what you can actually achieve because it's all well and good us putting something on the table that's got lovely layers in and as a show dog that we can produce a, you know, a beautifully trimmed dog but it's going to give people a real false expectation. I know when a lot of grooming seminars happen on the telly people will prepare them very much as if they're entering a grooming competition and they'll be trimmed so that when that coat comes off they come down really really nicely and that's really nice for getting a nice finish to a dog but when people expect to do that they're then disheartened when they can't achieve it and it's nothing to do with what they've done in that trim it's that the dog hadn't been prepped to be trimmed in that way like to look like that on that day so as i said earlier from the corner of the eye straight forward towards the corner mm. of the nose so i'm going to pull these few hairs out here um, this is about health of your dog um, as much as, you know, style for the breed, for you guys at home with your pets, you know, um, you, you generally don't see your groomers for like anything between 8 to 12 weeks, so you don't want all this in their faces, so just take a few hairs again. Some people all thin and scissor around their eyes in between trims and actually it's really a bit of a nuisance. Well, I can understand entirely why people do it because obviously you don't want the hair growing in their eyes. But then when we've had something and we haven't seen it for eight weeks and then we come to trim the hair around their eyes, it's really quite hard to pull. Yeah. So it is better if you can manage just to pull those few hairs out with finger and thumb. So literally, that's just opened up this area under the eye. And from the corner of the eye back, just taking all the excess out. She's got quite a sweet face, this puppy girl. Okay, we've got quite a Dennis Healy eyebrow going on here, and that's going to have to go. Um, but we, you trim to the corner of the eye back, because she's got a, quite a pretty face. Your head's in the way. Don't Here, just chop your head off, Rachel. Don't that way. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Let me just move that way. Good girl, good girl. We're just going to move the table. Good girl. Good girl. There you go. Good girl. Is that better? Right. So, um, we're just going to take the excess off. Now, I do think you can use a knife to trim the face, but when you've got a really good coated wire dog, there's really no point because um, you can do it with finger and thumb as well. 
So basically anything that's sticking out from the corner of the eye straight forward really just needs to come off and from the corner of the eye to the corner of the mouth so she doesn't need all of this hair. Um, Susan right. Nolan's just put, I may have missed it but can you explain the guard heads for people? Oh, okay. These lovely things, Susan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, basically they need to just come out. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I mean, this is just maintenance trim. They do stick out and cause all sorts of hassles. And I have known dogs actually um, get little abscesses at the base of the guard hairs. So you can see them there. It's like their whiskers, their main whiskers. So they just, just grab them, pull them out. And again, like the body coats, you can get all sorts of different colourings on them from black and white and multicolored. <laughs> I know. I know. So we pull them out. And the other thing is that their main, from a show point of view, we pull them out as well because it means the rest of their face hair lies a bit better. What you know, about eyelashes? Yeah, eyelashes. Well, hers aren't too bad, but we don't generally have huge long eyelashes. And as you trim the eyebrows, and normally the eyelashes go with them. Um, so we have quite a lot of our pet owners that have dogs with very nice eyelashes yeah. that like to keep them. And they're like, no, I take their eyelashes off, so we don't. Okay. But, I mean, when you're pulling, when you pull, do you want to sit? I think you want to sit, don't you? You want to? You can if you want. Just, I'm not sure. I'm not going to see your face, though, so. Right, I'm going to pull this off here. I normally use my middle, the my index finger, but I lost the end of it a few weeks ago and it's really sore. I've only managed to get my sterry strips off in the last week. Somebody's put, if I had done this to either one of my wire eyebrows, one gone, unfortunately, I would have been an A&A &A being stitched up. Well, it's about handling and... <clears throat> Getting them used to things being done, and unfortunately, if they don't have it done when they're younger on a regular basis, it's really difficult then when they're older to be able to change that. It takes a lot of time and effort and work, um, and it's very hard if you haven't got support or guidance to help you through that process. I've got another comment that I just missed. Can you talk about helping to even out the density of muzzles? Yeah. Okay. Well, that's a whole section on itself, yeah. really. But I will do Bathing, conditioning. Yeah. The way you brush, when you brush. Right. So, another bit of a tip is, especially for you, like, as I've said, this isn't like a show trim in, in any way. It's just a kennel maintenance <clears> trim <throat> and for you guys at home with your pets uh, to keep them tidy. Um, this area under the eye... The, this is really fragile hair here and it comes out really easily. So you don't want to be pulling their great with their eyes all about. But um, if you can just hold, support the heads. If you put your thumb on the edges of the tips of the hairs, let me move that out of the way. It's going to go in a minute anyway, pinky. Might as well just leave it now. Um, just lift the hairs up a little bit here. If you just put your, your tip of your thumb on that and just pull it backwards as though you're almost brushing under the eye but with the edge of your thumb and just grab the tips of the hairs, <clears throat> they'll come away. You know, that's all from under her eye and that's just using my thumb. So we got a question here. What are your thoughts on ear gluing? I get asked that a lot on my Wire Fox Terrier Facebook group. Right, I am a vet. My opinion on ear gluing is it's okay to glue their ears as long as you check the ears are really um, clean and clear with no waxy build-up before you do it um, and that you keep an eye on the ear and when the ears are glued, you should not block off the air circulation to the ear because if you block the oxygen from getting into the ear, you will make a perfect ideal ground to get really nasty ear infections so i think ear gluing is okay 
Um, it's not something I'd ever suggest to anybody. Go away and glue your dog's ears if they have no idea how to do it. Yeah. Um, but we do glue our puppy's ears um, sometimes. If they if they don't need gluing, we don't glue them just for the sake of it. If if we think it will help the set so of the ear, we'll, we'll glue them a little bit. Those two that were in first thing this morning that we showed people, they haven't had their ears glued. They're natural. And um, we didn't need to, so uh, we don't glue unnecessarily. And the other thing is you have to be a bit careful about what glue you use. So years ago we used to use copy decks. I don't know if they've changed something in the formula, but a lot of dogs now react to ear gluing um, if you use that. So we don't tend to use that. I quite like the tear mend. I haven't got any to show you because um, it wasn't something I thought would come up. Um, but um, we use tear mender and what we'll uh, usually do as well is we'll put a layer of new skin um from the chemists over their ears and their head before we actually glue it so we're not putting glue directly onto the skin um the um new skin will put a, a layer over the top of that right so just doing that with my thumb under the edges of her, of her hair that's just oh, and that. Susan Nolan's also put explain glue in um, for the, when they're teething, basically. So mm -hmm. where, when they're young, you know, uh, up to the time they're about six months old, uh, when their teeth are coming through, that uh, that can affect how they carry their ears. So uh, it's quite good to get the ears glued if you've got something that's got a bit fly away ears while they're teething and generally you would generally just glue them into the position you'd want them in so you just glue the tips down and it just holds them in the position while they're changing all their teeth because otherwise you know if you feel your own jaw you know there's a great connection between your jaws and ears and it's the same for dogs um, and when they're teething and they get that pain it can make their ears stick up or go slightly awry so if we just, we're not on about gluing them like, you know, no, you carry. if you, you so you you got kind of your two edges of your ear. Yeah. When Rachel or I glue ears, we will always keep airflow this side and this side yeah. of the ear. Um, so I know a lot of people will probably be really horrified about the idea of gluing ears, but if you do it in a safe way, you keep good that's ear flow. Literally, all you would do. I that's would that's actually that. argue. Anybody that's gluing their dog's ears is probably looking down their dog's ear canals far more often than the majority of people that aren't gluing ears. So actually, if your dog has got something wrong with their ears, they've got a smell, they've got a whiff, a lot of people that actually glue ears pick up on it a lot quicker than a lot of what other people do that aren't paying any attention to their ears. And it is only a short-term temporary thing. It's not like they've got to have their ears glued for months. You know, you're talking two to three weeks. So, you know, um, but yeah, I mean, they literally get the tip glued there and then you leave that area open and that area open and it just holds it in place just while they're teething and as soon as they're finished, this comes off and their ears just have kept their fold. Right, so eyebrows, literally corner of the eye, background to the corner of the eye. I mean, for the purposes of her... She which literally just needs these long pieces taken out really gently, really gently, just literally a couple of hairs at a time, just to give her some shape. You don't want to be hacking off eyebrows, it is sensitive again. Faces and ears are always sensitive. I was going to say faces, ears, and <laughs> then <I> <laughs> people <laughs> yeah sanitary areas faces and ears are very sensitive <laughs> so you know just be careful when you're doing those areas getting tired now aren't she you pinky getting bless tired. her steady 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 mm. and i'm just going to take the tips off just to even that up. So right, she hasn't got a huge amount of face hair anyway. Um, because she's been sticking her face where it's not wanted. But literally, if you comb it back, you've already brushed them out. Come here, come here, come here. Good girl. Years on now. <laughs> and just, she's so eager to please this girl. And I find I think most wives are, aren't they? They are. You know, they're such a wonderful breed. 
I know. Give me two seconds, all right? And air does look the same, aren't they? Air yeah. does get very offended if they think they've upset you. <laughs> so, you know, anything that's sticking out from the corner of the eye straight forward, just take it off. And I mean, you haven't got to go digging into the face there. She's got a natural line going on here from her poppy growth. And she hasn't had a lot of work done on her. So I'm just going to pull this off. Just to give it a bit of shape and even it up. That's literally all she needs doing here. And that's the same this side. She just needs a few hairs out. Just yeah, we'll make sure Pinky gets a treat at the end. We've yeah, got some little food yeah. treats on here. She has she's been a very good girl. Star, to be honest. It's been a big day for her because she's not used to being on the table for this length of time or frequently. It's only about every eight weeks, six to eight weeks, she's on the table for a maintenance trim. She gets her legs bathed and her feet checked and stuff in between, but she doesn't get the trim treatment. So we're literally just eating, and that will just stimulate a bit of growth as well. So in the future, when I do finally get round to thinking about showing up, it's just going to keep her ticking over in a wire coat. And when she's trimmed more regularly, the more regularly she's trimmed, the more fiery red that will go on her head. Whereas at the moment, it's a bit of a faded colour because she hasn't had it really worked. Um, the more it's trimmed, the more that rich colour will come. What are they doing? Do you think you ought to be part of that mm. going on? What? Who's that? <gasps> Who's that? What are they doing? They're being naughty. Uh, yeah, so it doesn't surprise me with your dog having its ears glued that it doesn't really bother them if you've been shown what to do properly. It it really doesn't. It's when you you do start making mistakes of closing up the air supply to the ears and they get infections and things, then it can be really bad. Um, but if it's if it's done properly, it's not really a risk at all. But obviously, even when you've done it properly, you you should be keeping a good eye on your dog's ears anyway. Um, check that they've got good ear health and they haven't got an infection. So that's a rough head trim for her. Um, it's just keeping her tidy. So do you want to just stand her side on now? So people can start to see she's starting to take a bit of a shape now, even though we went to that stage in the middle where she was looking like she's never going to come together. She is starting to look a sort of fox terrier shape now. Even without it, she hasn't had her legs or anything really trimmed. 